and we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I, I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time for is. you to get your just do. Yeah, you know the deal. We back again. Yo. A round of applause for Jersey's finest. A lot of content creators not worthy, but they minus. They get offended and start singing like the whiners. Talking like they tough, but it's only screaming and whining. My homie just do us the catch you don't come to Your squad get run through By the time you come to you duck food You suckers talk tough on the internet Revealing all your threats Now we got you trapped in the net Just do be on this grind Y'all better hustle up You dead lifted 90 pounds We doing muscle ups There's really no comparison His voice sound like a derringer Throwing a towel it's just embarrassing My dog just very philosophical And psychological and he mixed it all with good boxing news. These YouTubers feel like Bishop, I guess they got the juice. But it's lonely at the top to just to feel like child abuse. Be respectful, he don't want to talk wild and loose. If you can't relate, you get dismissed like a mild dispute. These weird cats would tell lies, did they didn't hide the truth. Why beyond views, you lose your life when you collide with dude. It's just do boxing. Or you cowards quit jocking. Kirk is official with no other options. Yeah, yeah. You know the deal. Judah Ben, we in the spot. Just do boxing, yeah. And of course, shout out to Mrs. Do. Holding the whole family down. Word them up, word them up. good was good salute to the fam on this good monday we back the kid boxing is just due you already know the drill man if y'all catch this on the playback come sub to the channels turn the not notifications on hit the like button <clears throat> you know tell a friend to tell a friend we back we back on the airwaves again what's good with the fam as we get this week of boxing started man with some interesting news. I know that y'all all done seen before y'all got here, but you know, I got to give my just do on it, got to speak on it, you know. Let me say what's up to the family. Kyle Sports, what's good, my bro? Says salute to Just Do Box and a real one. Salute to you, bro. Much love and appreciation. Shout out, loud. salute to the queen. How you feeling today? Andrew, what's good with it, bro? How you feeling? Justin James, what's good with it, fam? Hey man, salute to you, bro. Appreciate that, family. Miss Joe, salute Queen. How you feeling today? Miss Justin, salute to my Queen. How you feeling today, baby girl? Appreciate you stopping through. Aga Chavez, Jersey is in the building. Teach was good with it. Fate was going on, my bro. D1 was good with it, fam. <laughs> Boom back with the blicky, mandatory minimum. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's tricky, and that gets five years guaranteed, right? We're going to talk about it for sure, man. It's, it's unfortunate, man. It, 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 it's, it, this story is weird because you just, you just don't, just, it just don't make sense. It just don't make sense, but we're going to pull, I'm going to pull the article up and I'm going to read what's there. You know, we, we try not to give no spin on it. We just, we report what's out there. We speak on what's out there and we make our assessments from it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely unfortunate news, you know, especially with the momentum that um Bo Mac has been building. And like I said, I'm I'm big on giving people they just do. I don't expect nobody else to do it. You know, I probably had my jokes throughout all this Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford thing, but I never got on here and just completely tore into them. You get what I'm saying? So 
I have no problem today giving the man his credit because this is what he earned. You get what I'm saying? And anytime, you know, an unfortunate situation like this happened where you, you know, where it's an arrest with a firearm in a, in another country, you know, I mean, you know, whole nother, you know, state shots that you, 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 man, it ain't a good thing, man. The UK, they don't play with no guns over there, man. And, um, my thing is, uh, you know, how did he make it over there with a gun without it being detected, but then get caught on the way back? So I, I just don't, I don't know. I got questions and I don't have the answers to my questions, but all I could do is read what's already out there, right? And like I said, it is unfortunate because the man has been building a lot of momentum. Like he's been winning, you know, he won a big fight. Get what I'm saying? Undisputed fight. And he turned around, you get what I'm saying, and um, went over there in the UK with Chris Eubank, a guy that just was coming off a, a knockout loss. And, and he had this guy looking sharp, you know, disciplined. Uh, he was listening. You know, it was a good performance from Chris Eubank. A lot of people was picking Chris Eubank to lose again, to get beat up again. You get what I'm saying? I wasn't one of them. I did say Chris Eubank on his best would beat Liam Smith on his best. You get what I'm saying? Jelly Bean, what's good with it, fam? How you feeling? <laughs> he said, fine, I'll let up. I was still, <laughs> you still heard of the EJ loss. So you let it be known, huh? Salute to my bro, Fate, man. But yeah, uh, you know, Bo Mac has been building a lot of momentum for itself. And this the, stuff like this is good in, in boxing. You get what I'm saying? You just had a Derrick James who had a mean run all the way up until this loss, right? He had his trainer of the year. He got his just due, right? And then you got Bo Mac on the other end, it looked like he's positioning himself to be the trainer of the year. You get what I'm saying? That's why I put trainer of the year arrested in UK because, I mean, I think they would kind of be slighting him if he didn't get trainer of the year. And it's not just the Earl Spence victory. You get what I'm saying? To turn Chris Eubank around and have him look the way he looked in that fight. Very disciplined, looked like a, a, a different fighter. You get what I'm saying? He looked very focused. Uh, uh de dedicated he executed and more importantly what was interesting about the fight is you know Bo Mac just didn't have a lot of time with this dude and the fact that he got Chris Eubanks ear already is 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 a, a real good positive not only for Bo Mac but for Chris for Chris Eubank more importantly January 7 Capricorns is hard headed <laughs> right they say go on vacation leave on probation right right D1 Salute to my bro, Big Dog Willie, in that super chat early, man. Gums come from Ireland that are smuggled into the UK. Salute to Big Dog Willie. Much love and appreciation, family. And we ain't never got to <clears> box again. <throat> well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but, 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 but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do. Salute to Big Dog Willie, man, in that super chat. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, so um, I'm going to read a little bit of this article. You know, it's not a ton of information out there, but for what we do know, it's not it's not the best information, right? You get what I'm saying? So where I got connected with the Iris. <laughs> Bo Mac, like that. The Zoom verse, my bro, what's good with it, family? Peace and blessings to you. How you feeling, bro? He could have brought it over. I heard it last time he was over there. He got robbed. Maybe something happened. He got spooked. Hmm, that's interesting, man. That, that could explain something if that's if that happened to him. You get what I'm saying? He was robbed over there before. You get what I'm saying? That would be new to me. Appreciate you, Mr. Joe. Big text. What's good with it, fam? How you feeling, bro? Appreciate you sliding through. Yeah, that would be news to me. I mean, that that would kind of explain possibly why why he felt the need to bring a firearm, possibly. You get what I'm saying? Better safe than sorry, right? Better safe than sorry. So let me read this a little bit of this article, y'all. That is out here. So they mob, they got mob ties. Of iron. They probably did a little back in money. The Kenny Hands needed needed that strap. Yeah, De La Santos with the jersey slander. Yeah, we're gonna get on his helmet too, man. But it's fun. It's fun. De La Santos, you need fighters like that <clears throat> in boxing, because I do believe everybody's name that he's calling. I do believe he'll fight these guys. I just don't, he don't have an O to protect. Right now, I think he's confident he's coming off some of his biggest wins. So we're gonna get into that. But let me let me read some of this about Bo Mac. You get what I'm saying? Say Terrence Craw Terrence Bud Craw Terrence Bud Crawford's trainer, Brian Bo Mac McIntyre, is currently incarcerated after being arrested 
on September 4th for having a loaded firearm in his suitcase at the Manchester airport in England. You know, oh man, yo, they disrespectful. They disrespectful in this article, bro. Garrett was good with he said. I can't believe Bo Mac locked up over there. Yeah, Garrett, I can't believe it either. It's crazy. Jay Grant Jr. was good with it. Jay Grant, how you feeling? Very sure that the weapon was purchased black market in Ireland. He's the only supposed to do to get a fight. Yeah, yeah, pulling up the jersey. I like that. I like that. That's a cool look, man. That reminds it's like it's like almost like sending the bottles at the at the spot, right? It's a, it's a good look. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It's good for boxing. So I don't mind it. I like to see it. But that's interesting, uh, Big Dog Willie. That's interesting, bro. It's crazy, bro. We're going to read this, man. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all make sure y'all punch the like button one time for your boy. All right, man. They say, yeah, so he said he had a loaded firearm in his suitcase at the Manchester airport in England. This article, this is the article. This is not me saying it. They said the heavy set American trainer, Bo Mack, will be jailed in the UK until his hearing on October 9th. So they're saying he's going to be in here. He's going to be held to his hearing on October 9th. That's shit. That's like a month, bro. That's a little more than a month. You get what I'm saying? So they're going to have that man sitting there waiting to see a judge, which is unfortunate. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying? Just, just given his, his situ, his situation and his reasoning for being there, it was about business. Pretty sure he wasn't up to no good. You get what I'm saying? It got to be some type of reasoning for the firearm. That's probably not going to come out until he at least is able to release some type of statement. Right. October 9th is a little over a month away. You know what I mean? He got some. He got some business to take care of because, you know, October 9th, that's no telling that he's going to get out exactly then either. Right. That's just he going to see a judge then. So. I, I'm, you know, I'm no lawyer, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how this situation going to play out for him. I can only report what's out there. Like I said, um, it's crazy. Zane was good with it. Appreciate you stopping through. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It, it's just unfortunate. We probably do that with probably more shrooms in a week in Chicago alone than we have in 18 months. Yeah, I, I, I again, it, it, I just, I don't know the reasoning for it, right? You just don't know. But they saying, you know, he's going to be jailed in the uk until his hearing on october 9th which is over a month away you get what i'm saying today is september 4th so today is when he was arrested today so i mean that that's unfortunate um he's in unfamiliar territory uh i'm pretty sure he know the gun laws over there is pretty strict um i would suspect that he he did his homework before traveling with it but again y'all like we we just here to speculate and talk talk about this. Um, my my question is, how did he get it all the way over there undetected, but then get caught immediately trying to come back? You get what I'm saying? I just don't understand that. Like, how was it missed coming here, but not on the way leaving? You get what I'm saying? And that's why people are calling set up and, and foul play and different things like that, because it just don't make sense. Mandatory minimum laws, there's nothing the Lord can do. Nobody can do for him right. He's sitting in jail for five years straight. There. It's um, unfortunate, bro. I just don't know how this situation is going to play out. And <clears throat> and the reason why I say, you know, it's, it's like a domino effect because if he's unable to get, get you know, get himself out of this situation in, in a respectable amount of time, I mean, you know, it's, it's some things that's going to be a jeopardy, you would think. You get what I'm saying? You got the, you got Earl Spence activating his rematch clause, so you you hit you you suspect that that fight will be at some time in December. You get what I'm saying? Um, you just don't know how this could play out. It's, it's ugly. You get what I'm saying? You got Keyshawn Davis got a fight coming up October 14th. You know what I'm saying? Well, that interfe- intervene with that as well, and, and even a bigger fight. Like I said, the rematch with Earl Spence. Like it, it's crazy that that just happened, but. I mean, it's unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate. D Free was good with it, bro. How you feeling? Grind hard, Sports Nation with it, dude, fam. How you feeling? I have so much respect for Carl, man. Boom, man. I hope you learn from this. Yeah, Zane, man. Like, it's look, it's unfortunate. And I, I'll say this like, the man has been on the tear, man. He's been winning big fights, meaningful fights. You get what I'm saying? He just he coming off a, a great win with, with Chris Eubank. That was their first fight together. 
He had a short amount of time. I'm hearing four to six weeks to work with him. And he already had this man listening and performing at a high level, man. I know this was Liam Smith. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't no, you know, elite level opposition. But at the end of the day, it is a guy that he just went out there and lost to and was knocked out by. And he went out there and you get what I'm saying? He didn't even lose a round, in my opinion. He pitched a shutout, got knocked down, and then got the guy out of there in 10. So, you know what I'm saying? Much credit to Bomac because, like, like, let's make no mistake about it. Had Chris Eubank went out there and got knocked out again and lost, they damn sure would be blaming Bomac. Like, ah, you see, he went over here and da 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 They wouldn't have really factored in, you know, the fact that he only had a short amount of time with him. They still would have just credited him for the, for the loss had they lost. So the fact that he won, I'm just here to give him his flowers. Like I said, um, we all heard the news about the arrest today. It's unfortunate because – you know what I'm saying? It, it just it's it's an unfortunate, unnecessary setback. You get what I'm saying? Um, he want to go forward, and he's been building, like I said, a lot of momentum, winning fights, and um, he it, to me, he's looking like trainer of the year. And um, what this, how would this not only affect his his future fights moving forward, but his trainer of the year status and his career as a whole? Like, how, is he going? You know what's going what's going to happen out of this situation like everybody know that mandatory minimum five years is that going to be the case or is it just going to be some type of explanation that he can give that's going to work this situation out for him i just don't know i'm not in the legal system i can't i can't you know break down how this will play out for him i can just like i said report what's out there and tell y'all give y'all my thoughts let y'all know i just feel like this is unfortunate for him you get what i'm saying um, I know, you know, Team Crawford going to take a hit without Bo Mack, I believe. You get what I'm saying? I think um, despite what people think of him as a trainer, I think he's shown and at least proven, at the, you know what I mean, that that he's one of the better trainers in boxing. It's, it's unpopular opinion, but it is. The guy, the guy knows his stuff, man. The guy knows his stuff, man. So, again, um, you know, prayers to him and him in his situation. Like, don't nobody um, want to see see anybody locked up for any amount of time, especially in the area where you're not even from. You get what I'm saying? Where you was there for business and you handled business and, and, and impressively and, and you just was not unable to make it home. And that's that's the sad part about it. You know what I mean? That's like a gut punch. You get what I'm saying? Because I knew this guy was, you know, in his mind like that. Yeah, we went over here to the U.K., Got us a credible win. You know what I mean? He had Chris Eubank looking looking sharp. You get what I'm saying? He got Chris Eubank looking sharp, switched in, dialed in, focused. Just it's not a, it's just unfortunate, man. You go to judge your worst nightmare, it's the worst place you can be. I'm telling you, it's the devil's den. The devil's invented the gun. Thanks, Jess. Man. It's crazy, bro. Bro, man, hopefully we'll get through this year. I hope so too, man. I, I'm I'm rooting for him because at the end of the day, like I don't think his intentions, like if he was able, if this was something like where he, where it wasn't no foul play involved and he actually, you know, carried, traveled with this firearm, I, I'm pretty sure his intent wasn't to go stir up something or, you know, cause any issues. You know what I'm saying? I get, I'm pretty sure it was for protection. For whatever reason, uh, you get what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure. Good luck, Bo Mack, and things. So you already know, Zane. Appreciate you stopping through. Y'all make sure y'all sub to the channel. If y'all haven't turned y'all notifications on, hit that like button. We just gonna keep we're gonna keep building, man. This ain't the only thing. We we got a few things to talk about. This just was one of them. And I wanted to make sure in the process of him dealing with a, a unfortunate situation, I'm still able to get his man his credit for that for the amazing job that he's been doing in his last couple of recent fights. You get what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Um uh, it, it don't get no bigger than the Earl Spence win at 47 for him, right? So he's just coming off his guy winning the biggest fight of his life. You get what I'm saying? Making history. He's a part of that. You get what I'm saying? And, and to go from that, you know what I'm saying? Think about the high he's on. To go from that to, you know, travel over there in England and then go get a win where people were pretty much counting you out saying, like, what are you going – even Liam Smith said it. What you going to do with four weeks of training? Like, you get what I'm saying? He was very confident that you didn't have enough time to – to do anything different with Chris Eubank to get a different result. Well, as we seen, Chris Eubank went in there and pretty much pitched the shutout. I think that was one of the best performances of his career, if we being honest. I think that was simply one of the best performances of Chris Eubank's career, hands down. And you got you got Bo Mac, you got Bo Mac to thank for it. You get what I'm saying? Bo Mac was a part of that. So 
I, I, I like the win for him, man. I like the win. It's impressive. Um, like I said, the momentum has put him in a position, I think, to to be in a conversation and pretty much be a shoe in for, for trainer of the year. Get what I'm saying? Chance the queen rising from the ground. That Bo Mac doing five plus years over there. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I like that. I like that, guy, because I hope not. Give him saying he should get the trainer of the year, but we know how the media works and push that is right, uh, D Free. That's why I say, you know, we all we had these conversations and bills together. I can tell y'all what I think all day long, as I always say, but I don't know what y'all think. Do y'all think this is going to affect his potential trainer of the year status? Because that's what it's looking like for me, man. It looked like this man earned it the same way we was able to give Derek James his credit for earning it. I think he's done the same thing with, with Terrence Crawford. And I, today, I just don't have a problem giving this man his credit. Hopefully, like, he's able to figure out a way through this situation and, and, and just get through it because it's, it's something that he just don't need. Barbara D, salute, Queen. How you feeling today? Appreciate you stopping through. She said, did he fly over there in a private jet? Or perhaps he got the hook up when he got there. Hey, man, that is worth the conversation, right? Because we really don't know. And, and Barbara D, I just was having this conversation before I got on live with somebody. They said the same thing. Is it a chance that he flew private? You get what I'm saying? And got caught up like that? Like, so you just don't know, right? I, I don't know what happened with the guy, man. And it's it's just unfortunate, man. Like, uh, he was building, man. He was doing, doing everything right, man. Getting, you know what I mean? Preparing for these fights, winning these fights. Get what I'm saying? You got a rematch on the way. You got Keyshawn Davis fight coming up. Like, uh, you got a lot of work going on, man. Boxer Dramas 007, what's that? You can't have foreigners wandering about with deadly force and while the natives are banned from holding. I get you, man. Everybody's going to feel a little differently about it. I get you, uh, 007. You, listen, at the end of the day, I think the biggest issue was not just having the firearm. I think the fact that um, maybe his paperwork wasn't straight. Give what I'm saying? But we're going we gonna, to let me see. Let me see if there's anything I missed in his article as well. Yeah. Okay, you got it. And he's been now charged with possession of a firearm and possession of ammunition for a forearm without a certificate and will remain in jail at least until the hearing of October 9th. So hopefully October 9th he can get himself up out of there. You get what I'm saying? But they saying, you know, he didn't have uh, a certificate. So I'm guessing his paperwork and stuff wasn't right. You get what I'm saying? Undercar boxing was good, family. How you feeling? I'll be back laboring on Labor Day. I appreciate you, D. Well, salute to you. Don't work too hard. Yeah, because I swear I read UK gun laws are similar to NYs. You can have them. Just takes a lot of work and checks to register for natives. That is, I, I believe that. I believe. I think you're right, Shaw. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, so we yeah, that's just what it is. Went through a security scanner, okay. He was placed under arrest. Uh -uh. And and again, even even in this article, they have some of the same questions that we have. Box no one made no so yeah yeah no it's no excuses made we just having a real build around it we ain't making no excuses but we ain't about to demonize a guy for for making a mistake because at the end of the day it wasn't like he was toting a gun pointing it at somebody and got caught you get what I'm saying it wasn't like he was you get what I'm saying I, at best it just was a matter of him crossing T's and die eyes properly to avoid the situation you get what I'm saying and I think it's it's something that's happened to a lot of people right so I just don't want to like you know. There's, there's, no, there's no need for an excuse, right? It's, he's locked up. There's no excuse. It's just unfortunate is what I'm saying that he even got to deal with this because I feel like his intent with having a gun wasn't for the wrong reasons. They went over there to handle business impressively, and he was about to be on his way back. So I'm sure he wasn't up to no good. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I feel like it's mostly unfortunate. And then for you to be locked up for at least a little over a month, you get what I'm saying? It's the fourth now. You got to wait to the ninth of next month to at least get, get a hearing. So and even then, I don't guarantee that the situation is going to be worked out for you. So, you know, I don't wish jail on nobody, especially grown men that, that's really moving the right way, handling these situations. And, you know, he's a good good for boxing, believe it or not. Whatever people want to say, despite how, you know, all the fat weight jokes and 
all that. They even had a weight joke in this article, which is unprofessional as hell, but it is what it is. I just feel like, you know, the man, the man needs some prayer at the end of the day, man. I don't think he was, he, he was doing anything where you get what I'm saying. He was up to no good. Yeah. Y'all make sure y'all punch the like button, man, for your boy. I think he can carry anywhere because I remember him saying before he had charges. Now that's the issue too. That might be an issue too, Miss Joel. I did hear he has some prior situations over here in the states, so you know how they're gonna look at that too. You know what I mean, they don't allow firearms over there unless authorized, right? C Wood, what's good, family? How you feeling, bro? Appreciate you pulling up. Yeah, you're right. He was leaving. He just wanted protection because the UK be bugging with them shanks. Yeah, they they facts. They do. They do. I got you, D Free. I got you. I got you. Y'all yeah, free to come up and chop it up with your boy. Chop was good with a chop. How you feeling, bro? As a gun carrying citizen, you should have did his homework before traveling out the country, right? On the laws and, and, and the, you know, the procedures that follow. So he could have avoided this, right? American police don't carry over there. We have a special unit that we carry called them armed police. Appreciate that, guy. Appreciate that um insight, bro. You know, my can just run away, right? He ain't running nowhere. Yeah, bro, screw it up. Sometimes you got to that behind you. True. Smell set up ish. Yeah, my thing is, how do you get it here? I'm gonna, it's some more in this article. I'm going to ask some questions. I mean, I'm going to read some more of this article. We're going to talk about it. And again, it's just an open conversation, open dialogue. Like, we don't have all the answers. And, and it's unfortunate because of, you know, the momentum that he's been building. As I've been saying, like, it's, it's good to see what he's been doing in the sport. You know, getting these wins, man. That Chris Eubank win was... A damn good win, solid man to build off it. You know what I mean? You'll be you'd have been heading into what Keyshawn Davis fight October 14th, and then you know, maybe in December at some point, a rematch. I just don't know how this affects anything moving forward. Talk to me, D3. What's good with it? Hey, what's going on now? I'm just gonna uh, uh give a little bit of insight. Uh, um, basically, basically, what it is, the UK they don't allow firearms in that country at all. Like even, even even the police don't walk around with firearms. Now they have firearms, but they're in the precinct, so they don't they don't walk around with firearms. You have to be authorized to have a firearm. But my my main question is, how did he get in the UK with the firearm? Because they found it in his book bag at the airport as he was going back home. It wasn't like he was walking around and he showed it off or anything like that. He was right. actually. At the airport, about to go, about to get on the plane and, and go back, and they right. found it in his book bag. So, I'm trying to figure out how he got in there with it, and did he did he buy it while he was over there, or did he come over there with it? Right. It just it's don't. And again, like why are we asking that? Because it just makes sense. Like getting caught leaving, but not getting caught bringing it. The same procedures and checks got to take place. So how wasn't? they able to pick it up the first time around, right? Something, that's the part that got people scratching their head, like, huh? Oh yeah, I catch them on the way back and not on, on the way there, so it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, cause like, over there, like, like uh, getting caught with a handgun over in the UK is like, damn near, damn near a murder charge. Like, they, they don't play that at all. They don't mm. play having a handgun at all right. over in the UK. So right. I, I hope, I hope they give them a slap on the wrist he don't have any criminal background or anything like that. And they was like, okay, we just going we're gonna chop it up to him not knowing our laws and mm -hmm. we just gonna say you suspend it for six months or a year of coming over here or whatever. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know how they're gonna do how they gonna roll with it mm -hmm. because Mike was good, Mike. Yeah, now D Free, I heard he got he has some prior situations over here. Yeah, so I I, I don't know how they're gonna Great. I don't know how they're gonna do it because they don't they don't play that at all over in the UK. Right right shower yeah it's crazy like what the hell and you know even in this article they saying like salute to everybody in the building y'all make sure y'all punch that like button they saying you know the obvious questions about bomac's gun arrest is how did bomac get into the uk with a pistol was it noticed when his luggage was scanned while leaving the you know what i'm saying was right. it not noticed when his luggage was scanned while leaving the us or was this weapon purchased in the uk why did yeah. Bo Mac purchase the weapon? Well, you, you know, who did he put? If, that, if that's the case, they're saying, who did he purchase the weapon from? Surely he could have quickly bought one from a local shop without an extended waiting period. Was the gun brought from a private individual without the proper paperwork? Did Bo Mac leave his gun? 
you know, did Bo Mac believe his gun wouldn't be discovered while his luggage was scanned? It's, it's obvious that a firearm would be noticed, wouldn't it? Right. So it said, and then the last question, was the firearm planted in Bo Mac's luggage by someone? Could it have been set up by someone wanting to see the greater trainer? You know, the great trainer brought down the earth. You get what I'm saying? So give them to call it what you want, man. Like, they, they these are the questions. So and again, drug, kingpin, or anything like that. He, he's a trainer, and the the I mean the setup would have been him coming over to the UK, not after the fight is over and done with. It's over with. Right. It, they already they already won the fight. He's going back home. What would be the point of setting him up at that point? Right. So I I don't I don't I don't know how he got the gun in, if he bought it while he was over there. But my whole thing is you got Bomac. I mean it, we're seeing this time and time again with these. These celebrities, these these high, uh, uh, these these high class people that have mm -hmm. money, and they they feel the need to carry a gun. I mean, if you if you feel like your life is in danger like that, you have money to to hire a security team, hire hire one or two guys to, to walk around with you if you feel like you need you need to have a weapon. You need to hire okay. one or two guys to walk with you while you were over in the UK, and then when you go home, you you good. Especially, especially if you know, or even you know, if you're gonna carry, because if that's what you, you know, you feel like, oh, I don't want to go the security route, whether you just don't want to pay for it, you feel like you don't want to go that route, then you gotta make sure you carrying, you know, you know the gun laws to where you visit in and, and the procedures, and make sure your paperwork is, you know, everything is in order on that gun, and you could avoid this 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 headache for you right here. False mentality, Doctor Mark Salute, OG. How you feeling today? And what's good with the ant extortion I, above the Boo Mac? No telling, right? I mean, it's just good. I mean, but question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm questioning how he got. How, how did you? You thought you were going to get on a plane? With, that mm -hmm. happened with 9/11 and all that. They not playing that. You having a gun on on, on your person? Mm -hmm. They not going. So why why would why wouldn't you have that you have the paperwork straight because you can you can travel with on the airport do the paperwork they put it in a lockbox thing is a mm -hmm. it's in a lockbox stored under the plane off the plane they they bring you your weapon you go pick it up from the, the designated area you wake it up at so mm -hmm. i don't I, I before and uh, all you do, you fill out, you fill out the paperwork, you get, mm -hmm. they store the for you. And then when you get off, you go to where you got to go pick your fat, sign your name, and see, mm -hmm. you sign your name, your weapon up. Right, right. I, I don't know how. Hmm. Box your down. Yeah, I with it. We I just know. talking about it. Like they, uh, I hear, they, I read in there, they said he. He didn't. He didn't have a, a certificate of some sort. So I'm. I'm guessing it was a. You know, a matter of uh, paperwork and things like that. You know what I'm saying, following the proper see, procedures. See, this is what confuses me. I saw. I don't believe Bo Mac was trying to do something. Something dumb. Right. Right. Time salute, bro. Good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So for me, what confuses me on this is how I thought the only people that are supposed to only people that are allowed to bring firearms onto a plane or even check a firearm onto a plane are federal agents like the 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 air marshals or like DEA agents or something like that not like a regular civilian i didn't know yeah right no right. no, no they, you you're absolutely right it's is us marshal federal agents those those type of anyway, you have to be upper like even a regular police officer can't have a weapon on them it has to you have to be upper level law enforcement to have a weapon while you on a plane you got to be upper level and even how, then, how did he get away with it though I, I like i said i don't know how he got past security I, that's why i'm thinking that he had to buy that over there because you when you go through security at the airport over here nowadays you getting stripped all the way down. You got to oh, take your man. belt off, your shoes off. You going through a metal detector, your bag going through a metal detector. If they see something in there that resembles a weapon, they going through everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm thinking he had to purchase that over there. There was no way he could. I, I mean, I ain't going to say there's no way, 
but I just find it hard for, to believe that he got through security here. That's what and I'm saying. He, he, made it, he made it all the way over there, and then on his way back, they find it on his way back in his book bag. Right. Because no, if you if you hit it, if you if you tucked it away to get it over there, why wouldn't you tuck it away the same way to get it back? That don't make it don't make sense. Oh, uh, the only the only way I can see this happening does Terrence have does Bud Crawford have his own private plane and they they have no. a private airship? No, no. Oh. Mm-hmm. Not not going not going into the UK. You need a you need a big ass you need a big ass plane, you, a private plane. They, they that that's 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 going uh, that's in the states. You going from state to state. You when you going across seas, you need a big ass plane like a seven forty seven. You need a big plane that got a big fuel tank. Okay. It's, it's not the av- it's not no. The that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Does the do. Does Terrence have enough money where he doesn't have to go through regular, regular? What is it called? I mean, I'm pretty I mean, sure he got enough money, but and I has his own plane. Yeah, yeah he got enough money for that. Would. But yeah. yeah, that 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 would be that would be Terrence Crawford. That's that's Bo Mac that went over there. So he probably got enough money to do it. But why would you do all that just to carry a gun? That, right. that it makes no sense just to carry a gun. I know. I see what you're saying. That's why I and, said, and I man, agree with uh, you. It has to be that he got the gun there, like a. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, we speculating. Of course, I want everybody to know this is open dialogue, bro. Um, I see Boxer Diamonds. You, you seem like you agitated. You saying he a man deserved a full five years? See, you got a different energy. We we men in here, we don't wish jail on people. Like we, he, it's if he's in the wrong, it's the the story gonna come out, but. Just for, no, just how much is private security? Like, that man, how, much, how much is business, and that's private? what he did. And for you, it's like you almost wishing that he get it. Yeah, he deserves to fight. Like, why? I don't, we don't wish jail on people. Like, no, I'm not if, if, he, if, he was, on man for like, if, if he was being reckless with the gun or something, right. yeah, you could say right. something like that. Right, pointing a gun, you know, being a threat with it, anything. The most careless thing, you know, obviously they saying without a certificate. So, you know, maybe his pa- paperwork wasn't right or whatever the case. He didn't follow the proper procedures, with, which obviously has led him in this situation. But again, you know, just having a real conversation, we're going to ask real questions like, how did you make it out of here with a gun? And it why did you be, get caught? Private security can't back? be so that expensive where BOMAC had to resort to that. To No smoke. What's good with it, bro? That, that's what I'm wondering. It, Private security over in London is like I have friends who who actually have private security because they're in the military and stuff like that yep. that have a whole bunch of money and stuff and they say not a whole bunch like about the same amount like as these boxers and like these promoters and stuff that it can't be that expensive to to where Bomac had to resort to buying a, a not a legal weapon but buying a permanent <laughs> Unpermitted weapon like that, it can't uh-huh. be that expensive. No, I mean it, it, it's not. It's not. I mean, even even if it is expensive, you got to think about it. Bo Mac just came from out of the, the one of the biggest fights of the year. He 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 got he got the money to pay for whatever permit that he need to have to to carry it. It's just a it's just a matter of why didn't he go through those procedures like he was supposed right. to? Right. Lack you know, of patience. Yeah. Americans don't have patience because, uh. Uh, Americans, when it comes to overseas stuff like that, I talked to a friend who's who's a who lives in England. He says they usually take about five, two to three years to get that permit and stuff like that. And I guess Bomac didn't want to wait that long and stuff like that. Like yeah. Americans yeah. don't have the patience to deal with that. You can speculate it, but I know they said something about a certificate, like without a certificate, so whatever that. No, that, that's what I'm talking about. Like is. the certificate takes two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, it's about two or three years. I just don't know. It's like, I mean, it's reasonable to, you know, speculate that, right? Because that's all we could do at this point because we don't truly know. We only know, you know, that he got caught up. Buckle up, box and talk. What's good, family? How you feeling, bro? So, and it's like, I don't, I don't, I won't, I won't categorize it as Americans not having patience. And that's what bro just did in the chat. You, you Americans this, Americans that. I don't make it like that. Everybody fuck up. I, I, I don't matter where are you from no but people in general don't have patience just humans in general so i don't know why dude is so so making it so personal 
That's why, that's why I say I'm going to start asking you dudes how old are y'all. Y'all got to learn how to have a conversation, bro. It's only a conversation. I'm, thir I'm, thir I'm 32. Time. I'm 30. Like, I'm in my early 30s. No, they're not, they not, they not, they not, not talking about you. They're not talking about you. Not you. He's talking, about, he's the, talking uh, about in the chat. Right, being so, like, extra. You get what I'm saying? This ain't, we don't root for men getting locked up. Now, again, if he was being an asshole, then there would be no justification to what he did. But you most certainly can level with a person making a mistake. Uh, nobody's above making a mistake. I could level with something like this because I feel like his intent behind the, the reason for carrying that wasn't, you get what I'm saying, to, to be dangerous, to be harmful to to the, anybody surrounding him. You get what I'm saying? I think it was for obvious yeah. things like protection. Simple. But I, I, could I be play know. devil's advocate a little bit? You know what I mean? Kendra was good with a fan. Could, could I play right, devil, devil, devil's advocate with the comment that the guy made? Maybe he's thinking maybe we're just speculating. Maybe he's speculating that maybe Bomac was waving the gun irresponsibly and stuff Mr. like that. Mr. Plus 300 salute. Yeah, and you know that's not the case because we would have heard it, right? And they found it in his luggage. That's how they, you know, through the security scan and he was, you know, arrested right then and there on the spot. So we know he wasn't doing that. My thing is, um, was it, you get what I'm saying? The biggest question is how, how did it get there? Well, you know, was it brought? You get what I'm saying? Or was it purchased there and then try to bring it back? You get what I'm saying? Did you really see, forget? See, and that's you know what, what uh, that's what the oddest thing is. Mm -hmm. We think we think airport security here in America is tough, right? Shout and, out. And, and, um, in in the UK, they're 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 as strict as us. So I'm surprised that gun got through, got got past the. With it yeah, that's why. That's why I'm thinking that he. I'm thinking he might have purchased that over there because I can't see him traveling all the way overseas and, and going through our security and then going through the security overseas and still being able to sneak that in there. I'm thinking that he had to get that while he was over there. I couldn't mm -hmm. see him traveling all the way through and be able to get it through like that because just like I said, when you go through the airports here. They, they they pretty much strip you, almost strip you all the way down. You you taking everything off that got metal on it, and you mm. putting that through the scanner, and then they going through your bags. And if they find something that seems oh, like it has, we, it we is forgot. A weapon. Hey, D free, D free. I got forgot. I got that. Maybe, thing. I got the video. We was gonna talk about that too. I got it yeah, in my. Let, let, let's not forget. Maybe he has a. You know how uh, maybe TSA precheck, precheck doesn't doesn't make you go through that. That issue and stuff like that. Maybe he has he he was able to go. No, no, no not when not when you're going not when you're going across seas. When you're going across seas, you still gotta go through the you gotta go through uh you gotta go through the security check. Now it'll let you it'll let you skip through the line when you're doing just a regular state to state. But when you're going across seas, you still gotta go through uh you gotta go through uh security check. Because right. they gotta okay. make sure like they gotta, they gotta and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, they gotta make sure that you're not smuggling nothing across seas. They're not gonna, they're not letting you just skip through like that. Now, yeah. if, from state to state, they let you skip through the line, and your bags is the only thing that will go through the metal detector. But right. when you when you going from across seas, you are going through the metal detector because they gotta make sure you're not bringing nothing to another country or you're not bringing anything in from another country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I, f I right. feel bad for Bo, Bo Mac. If if I understand if he made a mistake and did something stupid, but if like 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 I said, waving a gun like that, like buying a gun and did something stupid like that in the airport, but good uh, cousin Ashley's going. Let, let's not let's not go as far as people saying he should be in jail. Yeah, I, no, I, don't, I don't. I don't think he need. I don't think he need to be in jail. I think. I think he need to. I think. I. I think. Me personally, what I think should happen to him, he should be suspended from going over there for a certain amount of time, or however long they feel that he need to be suspended. But I don't think he need to do no jail time. I think, or maybe a fine, just a his, fine. Yeah, definitely a fine. Definitely, he's, he's definitely gonna get a fine. But I think a suspension, a suspension for for a time frame of going over there, he need to have that. And a, and a fine, but I don't think he need to be in jail because, like I said, he wasn't being reckless. It, it, it wasn't like it was a major firearm. It, it, from what they saying, it was a, it was basically a handgun. It was basically a handgun, and he had it in his book bag. 
and he was he was he was trying to uh, uh get onto the plane or come home. Wherever I see Brian McRae in the chat, I ain't see you in the chat. You say what's up to the uh, people. Hit that like button. Sub to the channel before you click the link. I ain't see you in the chat, so I don't, I don't know if I'm tripping, but. Right, man. Yeah, Might no, and, and I kind of feel bad for good. Bomac that people are just jumping to conclusions saying he did this on purpose. Yeah, nah. Like, nah why would he do that? That's stupid. Don't nobody want to go to have the jail. Said, the day, that, that, why are you convinced he's guilty? I'm not saying he. I'm, I didn't say he was guilty of anything. The only thing he's guilty. No, of I'm is saying having fans a, in uh, general uh, are doing no, this. No, no. Right. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking. About, I'm talking about in the chat. He said why I say I'm convinced that he's guilty. He is guilty for not having a lawful firearm in their country. Right. You can't walk around with a firearm in their country. So he right. is guilty of that. I mean, yeah. I, it's yeah. no, there's no way around it. He's, he's guilty of that. You right. can't I have agree. a firearm in their country. That's what it seemed like, just not having a, you know, proper documentation and that being enough, you know, cause of concern right there. Just, you know, pop, following protocols and procedures, things yeah, like no, that. Yeah, right? no, and, and let, let's be and honest. Good, like, bro. And I think, but, like, I'm not saying it's um, just right. us, but yeah, in good, general, good. Americans have this good, tendency bro. to carry weapons around, and they think other countries allow that, like, just just you to carry a weapon around. Like, in England, it's actually illegal for you to carry a, a gun around and stuff like that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't carry a gun. Like I said, like I was saying earlier, even the law enforcement in 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 uh, the UK don't walk around with a weapon. They don't walk. They walk around with a a baton, a nice stick. Pe and, yeah, baton, pepper spray, and handcuffs. They don't walk around with a weapon. Only time that you see them with a weapon is because they having a shootout and they have their weapons locked in the precinct. They go to the precinct, get their weapons, and come out and 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 try to uh, disarm the individual. But they don't walk the streets with a weapon on them. They don't. Yeah, it didn't say uh, cause uh, if it said something about him, he didn't have a um proper certificate for the for the gun so it didn't say if it was registered to him from the yeah. article right? no and, and to be honest like i like we've been saying he he can't get, he there was no way he could pass through american security after what happened with 9 11 you really think oh, he, he was able to that's what the, I'm saying. that's what's crazy but it's like, damn, yeah. you purchased one once you got there, uh, Bo Mac. Like, is that the possible? Because, you know, again, we got, for everybody in the chat, we're having an open dialogue, open discussion. If y'all want to come up and, and add to it, feel free to. Jay Smith was good with it. So how do we know it's his gun? Like, now nah, they ask some real questions because they're right. And then that's what's real. Um, Just don't, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I loved if he could just release a statement, man, just to say, like, what the hell happened and how how it ended up. Did, did you pull a Joel Santana type deal? You get what I'm saying? How he got about the fact that he was carrying, like, I, Santana. what happened? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, he had a situation where he had, um, I caught up with a um, firearm in the airport, too. Crushed the yeah, No, no, and to be bro. honest with Bo Mac, you if he made a mistake and he forgot to get the proper documents, I can let him pass. But if this is, I understand if it's a first time offense, but if people, people are acting like he's, he's done this before, like that's the, now, that's now the problem. Look, I did see, bro. I don't, I, I can't back this story. Anybody mm -hmm. that's in here, y'all feel free to back this story. I did see dude in here. I don't know if they blocked him, but I seen him mention, mention that Bo Max said, the next time he's coming to the UK, he's going to have a gun. Now, I can't back I've, I've, not, I've, never, I've never heard story, that. But he said he, he claims he, that's why he was so adamant about, oh, he deserves the five years because he said he was going to do it and he did it. So I don't, I didn't hear him say that. You get what I'm saying? And I like that. I, I mean, I, if, yeah. if the dude, if the, if the dude is still in here, I like for him to post that link where Bo Mac said it because I've never right. heard that before. And I'll definitely go check it out because it's always a discussion. Like, we're not here to, you know, try to pass judgment, but I'm damn sure not gonna sit up here and be no advocate for no man getting five years because of a lack of a certificate. And I get, I get it's strict over that understanding, but I'm still not going, you know, because of the circumstances, like he was on his way back, getting the hell up out of there. You get what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to cause no ruckus out there and I get it, you know, laws are laws and all that, but I'm still not gonna be no advocate for no dude getting no five years for that. I've seen people- No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not For me, at the maximum, be six months. At the max, yeah. at the max, I don't, I don't, six I don't, or seven months. I don't even think he need. I don't even think he need to do six months. I I think he need to get 
get his license suspended for going over there for a certain amount of time and get him with too. a nice phone fine and, 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 and send him out. Getting robbed over there or, or almost getting robbed or something like that. So maybe that's why he says something about, you know what I mean? Maybe I, I wonder if I can look that up, bro. I wonder if I can. Maybe, look. maybe. you might can look it up. I'm gonna see, man. And I think it, that it, comment. Again, I, I love the, information, bro. I just like to have the right information. Yeah, no, you know what? With that comment that the 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 guy that yeah. you guys blocked said, um, someone in the chat blocked. Maybe the the line of thinking is maybe it, he feels he was premeditated. It was premeditated that that Bomac knew he was gonna get a gun when he was over here. He he already I planned mean, to get the gun. Like, I don't say if he said if he said that and he went ahead and did it, then yeah, I mean, I mean that that that's a bonehead move, and maybe he do need to uh, 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 get some time from it. But I I don't I don't know if he said it because I've never seen him say nothing like that, so I can't yeah. say that he said it. I can't say that he said it. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I, and I'm I'm ex law enforcement my damn self. I'm not gonna put no man in jail that I don't I don't believe deserve to be in jail. Uh-huh. I, I I'm just not gonna do it. And especially then, not no black, especially not no black man. I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's five year minimum. That's wild, bro. Yeah, especially especially not no black man. I'm not gonna put him in the jail unless he deserved to be in there. And like I like and from all reports, all he was doing was leaving. It wasn't like he was showing it off. It was in his book bag, tucked away in his book bag, and right. he was leaving. It's so that, that 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 doesn't deserve a man to go to jail for five years. It doesn't deserve a man to go to jail for five years. Now I understand their laws are different from ours. Like we we can't we can't go by what our laws are. They have their own laws. That's another whole country. So, but I'm just saying how I feel about it. Being though I'm ex law enforcement, how I feel about it, it doesn't deserve him to be in jail for five years for that. And I'm from entering the UK, something like that. Teach you. I know he'd take that over. You know that jail time. Skywalker boxing was good, bro. Call Bill, but not Bo Mac gun going into the UK. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't get it. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. They caught Bill, make sense. but not Bo Mac. It was that serious. Why would he hire security? Right. That's that's a good point, too. And again, we just speculating and you know, having a discussion around see, it. Cause, see, that's a logical, that's a logical man, question right there. Two charges, well, so it's going to be five, five, yeah, five. Yeah, and see, that, that, that don't, yeah, that don't make sense neither. That don't make sense. Well, that that was that was Australia. That wasn't the right, UK. Right, uh, the ammunition too. Damn. Yeah, that was that, that was that was that was Australia. Holy Australia God. wouldn't let um wouldn't let Bill Bill Haney over there because of his criminal background. Right, so Bowman, right. right, right. So, so they, I know people got questions, and we we free to have questions, man. It, it, it's 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 just a weird situation. Like, do you really forget that you're toting a gun? Like, what's the likelihood of that, right? Like, man, is that your luggage, man? Damn, like, <laughs> make me wonder. I'm, say, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna pass no judgment until I get all of the reports. Right. But from yeah. the reports that we got right now, he didn't do nothing outside of carrying a gun that he wasn't supposed to carry. He didn't do nothing dangerous. It wasn't like he was being dangerous with it. He had, he did something that he wasn't supposed to do. It's just like you going in the goddamn supermarket and you you picking up a motherfucker a, a pack of grapes and you eating the grapes you ain't supposed to be eating them but does that deserve does that involve you you supposed to go to jail for, for eating grapes even though you yeah, was about right, to pay right. for them instead of you just I see people do it all the right time you're not story. supposed to do you know what I'm see what, what nah, i don't bro, get though no, we're gonna talk about that it's some rumors i think that's some old media stuff too see, trying to draw see, the wedge see um, D -C, what, what i don't get though is what i don't get with bomac realistically what i don't get with this situation is like, like how they usually tell you when you land in England, like there's a thing going into immigration and it tells you the rules of what you, yep. uh, what you're supposed yep. to do and not supposed to do. How did he not yep. notice that you're not supposed, how did he not read those instructions and it says right. that you're not supposed I, to bring your I, firearm back. I, I already said that I said that earlier. I was on somebody else live when we were talking about it. I told him when you when you're going overseas, when you get your passport and you're going overseas to another country, they give you all the do's and don'ts for that country. And it's up to you to follow the rules. If you don't follow the rules, if something happens, it's on you. Oh, so damn. 
I I can't I can't I can't oh, say uh, he doesn't deserve to get he doesn't deserve to be in jail right now because he did something he wasn't supposed to do. Right. But I don't think he deserved to do five years. Hey, I, I, I will say that. Good, bro. And Rick said, "How did he get it in?" That's what we we asking. Like, you get what I'm saying? And why wasn't it detected? That's, what, that's how we trying to figure out. That's why they asked the question. Like, was it purchased there? Uh, did somebody put it in his bag? And that's just questions that yeah. you know they because like people want to people around him. You know what I'm saying? It's just weird, man. Damn, that's stupid. Yeah. That's yeah, very. I said, that, I said that earlier, Rick. They, the UK don't play that's when it comes to. When it comes to the, the handgun, they don't play that. That's that's a class A felony. They don't play that. Facts, facts, but, Seattle, Rick, facts man. Like, find them, do something. Suspend them from coming over there for a while or something, bro. I don't, yeah, that that yeah, five years stuff. And then knowing that he has some prior situations over here from where, where he from, it's just like how that's going to play a factor. Like, how do you get them saying? How they going to try to spin that one, man? Damn, went over there and wow. whooped, whooped ass and, and, and was on his way about yeah. it. Man, what's good, bro? Yeah, you feel yeah. Damn, what good. I will what I will say right now at this point, it don't look good for Bo Mac. <laughs> right right now. Right. It, it don't it don't look good for him. It's unless he got right. a unless like he got a hell of a lawyer. Do sound crazy. Unless he got a hell of a lawyer, it don't it don't look good for him. Right. Yes, yeah, no, and good, and, and that's that's where I think the that, that five years goes is coming from because uh, th they're strict. No, that's, their, that's their law. That's their yeah. law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He violated a law. law that you're not supposed to be carrying a gun yeah. unregistered. Yeah, that's, for that's their law. They, 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 their law is if you get caught with a gun, you, you automatically going to do five years. Right. That's that's. Are right, you supposed that's to automatic. definitely know that's what automatic. you're carrying at all times? They want for sure. But that's the thing. When, when, like, say if that, say if we going with that, right? Like, damn, how you ain't know? Um, I think the question for me, the only one would be like, why wasn't it detected on the way and only on the way back, right? If it was a matter yeah. of just having to know you and not knowing and forgetting about it type stuff, right? But it's damn, it's hard to forget about a firearm, man. See, little see, bit, right? It, 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 it's, it's hard, it's, it's hard it, as hell to forget about a firearm, dog. You know what I'm especially, saying? Especially, it's especially, hard, if, especially if it's, hey, if it's hey, your firearm. If it's hey, yours, right now, it's hard as hell to make an exception it. for America. No. If it's someone you, else's, I, I can understand. If it's boy, someone that it. snuck it in no. from I his can, group. I cannot, I cannot forget about my firearm. I got two Y'all smashed that like a purse boy. No, what I'm saying, exactly if someone else, that. I'm saying if someone else in his group put the firearm, he might not have noticed it, is what I'm saying. Hey, if if he if somebody in his in his circle did that shit, oh, not only not only are they fired, but they deserve a serious ass whooping. And I kind of feel they bad deserve. for Bomac in in a sense. I understand why he, if he did it and forgot about it, like you said, as a policeman, uh, yes. how can as a police officer, former police officer, D free, how do you forget about your own firearm? Like how is that possible? You don't. There's there's no way. There's no way that, that I I don't care. What you're doing, there's no way in the world you're going to tell me that you forgot you had a firearm on you. There's no way you, you, that's what, that's what, that's like you forgetting that you had your wallet on yourself or you forgot you had your car keys in your pocket. You don't forget that you got a firearm. Philly was good so with I, it. Philly. Like I said, I got, I got two in my house. I know exactly where they at. I know exactly what they look like. I know the exact serial numbers of both of them. That, that, that's something that I don't forget about. I don't forget that, especially if I'm going out of town oh, damn, and I'm carrying my firearm on purpose. I'm carrying my firearm. I'm not going to forget that I got my firearm. As a civilian, I ain't forgetting about mine. Right, right, Shower. That's why I say, like, just speculating, because that's all we can do right now. Like, is it a chance that you forgot? But if that's the case, then I would have thought that if you forgot, you forgot taking it there and bringing it back, right? So they would have picked up on it on the way there instead of just catch you on the way back. That's why I understand that's people what, asking the question. That's, like, why, did that's you, what I'm saying. Did you buy it from you somewhere can't. out there? Did you buy it from somebody? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You, you couldn't have forgot you, you had it because you hit it on your way there. I think it so was you couldn't have forgot that you had it. You, you hit it on the way there. See, see, and what I'm thinking, what I might have happened, you, if, if, if the if the scanners didn't catch it, maybe it was a malfunction on okay. the end from the U.S. that the they didn't catch the firearm in the first place. Maybe there was a malfunction in the what is it called those the the X-ray machines Metal and detector. stuff like that. 
nah, it ain't no malfunction. Them motherfuckers see everything. If it's a malfunction, they they stop in the line, and they're gonna send you to another line. They 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 not letting you go through those. That after what happened at nine eleven, they not they not letting nothing go through like that. Nothing. If the metal if the if the X ray machine is not working, they're gonna stop everything and send you to another line where the x-ray machine is working you bring pain he probably this is not like the age where you're like uh i'm not sure if this is exaggeration people used to the the 18 what is it called the people that work at the airports used to let people walk on with guns was that an exaggeration is that an exaggeration d free like like in the 80s and 90s you talking about but 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 you talking about you talking about a domestic flight is not is not the same as an international flight. Okay. An international an international flight. You, you you're not you're not just walking around the, the the metal detector and the X-ray machine. You're not just walking around. You do that on the domestic. If you if you pay the if you pay that um the uh TSA you pay the uh the the, the, the lower pass for TSA you can get you can get the pass where you skip through the line, but not on a not an international not an international flight. Actually, no, actually now D free you you. I, I, I'm not sure how long has it been since you've done international. They have something like that now for international where you can skip the all that. They have a they have an international thing where you can skip uh skip through TSA and stuff like that. I forgot what it's called, but you have to you have to like register and you have to make sure you good, don't have really? any criminal you I don't have, you have to make sure you don't have any criminal uh criminal background. But like if, even 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 if that even if that is true, when you when you have a pass like that, you are you also that pass also goes it goes through when you get overseas. You, you, you walk around all of that as well. Because yeah. when you when you have that pass, when you have that pass, it's not just for the airport that you're leaving from; it's the airport that you're landing at as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I have that pass because. Right. I have that pass because I, I fly to DR every summer and stuff like that. It, it applies for both airports, the one you're leaving from and the one you're going into. Well, yeah, that's what it's, not, it's, not, it's not just for the one you're leaving from. It's also for the one that you're you're going to because there's, there's no purpose of paying for, for, for one and you're not paying for it. You got to still go through the metal detector at the other one. So you want to pay for for both of them. Yeah, and I kind of feel bad for Bomac yeah. that people are just assuming he did this on purpose and stuff like that. Like, like he was ignorant to the fact that he forgot a firearm. Like you, you guys have been saying, how can you forget your own firearm? How right. the hell is it possible that, unless it was like so hectic that he forgot that he had it in there? Like, yeah. like just like, never know until he at least get a chance to speak on it because i would love to know like how it got there and what was the thought process behind it and like i said i can't i can't validate the story but i will throw it out there for what his work dude did say that he said before you know um he could he go back to the uk bringing a gun for what reason and i did hear a story about him supposedly i don't know them trying to rob him or attempting or whatever the case who knows right but it's just it's sad because the man building a lot of momentum and he really been, you know what I mean, winning these meaningful fights. Like I said, man, he had Chris Juban got this styling on uh <laughs> he was in his bag. You get what I'm saying? Combination punching. He was listening to uh Boat Mac. He didn't even have that long with him. So for him to, you know what I mean, get that win out of him and then be on his way back to continue doing what he's doing, and it's just this uh, jammed up it's it's I, I can't remember i thought there was a big time fighter a few like in the 90s that had this issue like i right. thought it was like a uh, tyson or something he went to fight somewhere in in the uk and he got caught with a unregistered firearm was it tyson or like holyfield i thought that right that, that, i hope you keep you get up out of it too and just keep it pushing man so, d i can't remember um you guys have watched boxing longer than i have has a big time fighter had this issue that Bo Mac has where he got caught with an unregistered firearm in another country and stuff like that after a fight or just going there to visit like on vacation or something like that? Um, back in Bantam. Um, right. there, there's, yeah, there's been, there's been, there's not only, not only fighters, but athletes that's been caught with uh, firearms <laughs> in another country before. 
Yeah, no, yeah. that's why I'm asking. Like, I, I'm not saying this is where I'm getting mad with people accusing this guy, saying it was premeditated, like saying that Bomac did this on purpose. Like, I mean, that's somebody that's like juvenile way of thinking. Ain't nobody going on with him. Wyerson, what's good with it, bro? Talk to him. Hey, what up with y'all? Yeah, I mean. I, I mean, whether he did it on purpose or he or he didn't, the whole thing is, it, it, it's, it, it, it was at the wrong time that you decided to carry a firearm wrong and the place wrong too. place to carry one too. Right. That that that's the wrong place. Now I could see if you was you was going to Mexico or something like that, but to go over there where they have very strict gun laws where you can't walk around, uh, no civilian can walk around with a gun. Let alone, and the, and like I said, the police don't even walk around with a gun. Mm -hmm. So to carry a gun yeah, over yeah. there, you're saying that too. He's from over there. He said it's like a special unit or something like that because they don't they don't run around with um. Hey, <clears throat> just do. Yeah, can most I, can of I, the police do. only can care about the and pepper spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me. All right. So I don't know how, I don't know how versed people are in this particular situation. A lot of people mm -hmm. just saw a tweet, and you know, we're just running with that. The circumstances behind this shit is shady. True. Shady as fuck and illogical, mm -hmm. right? So essentially what they're telling me is Bomac got through our customs or, or I don't know if you flew out private. So essentially what they're saying is he got to the UK with a gun and then got caught bringing back, got right. Got, right. got caught going back with a gun. Right. That That's why I said I think he bought it while he was over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but why would you bring, why would you buy a gun to mm. go to the United States? Defray? True, coming back right after you the threat, you would figure if it was a threat, it would be where you was just at, not to where you're going, right? You have yeah, you have guns. You, um, Appreciate we're allowed we're, we're allowed to carry firearms. We're allowed to bear arms in our country, right? Uh -huh. So why why would I purchase a gun in the UK? Only to, this is a fifty three year old man, mind you. This is not no fucking kid. He's a 53 year old man with with knowledge. We've all had people get locked up in our lives with guns. We've seen friends get put away. Oh no! So you're telling me that he's going to buy a gun in the UK and then try to take it back right. on a domestic Time flight blue, by check, right. wait, checking his bags in early with the firearm on it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a, it's illogical. It's just some stuff that just don't make sense. It make you scratch no. your head. But you know I mean. But I with, just, what, mm -hmm. it, just do in, in regards to a lot of guys, as soon as they hear a black man with a gun, they automatically label them as guilty. I'm not saying nobody on the panel. I'm just right, right. That's, that, that's what the the um the climate is right you know, in 2023. Right. And, and it, it, it doesn't make sense. It it's it's Asinine. Like I'm stuttering because I'm angry. I get I've been it. I get you. It's like I'm just words. Nah, I, I, I hear, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I'm just trying Please. to figure out what 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 would be the what would be the motive to set up Bowman. That's the whole thing. That's my thing. No, what that's what, where it? I was coming. Why I I told D Free, let maybe someone in his own like entourage put it in there. Like I don't know what the motive would be to set up one of your friends like that. Like what what line of thinking? Unless they're just je jealousy and they wanted him to to suffer or something like that, because he was making so much money and stuff like that, because of his son. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's my whole thing. I just I just want to know. It, I mean, even if it, even if it was a setup, what would be the motive? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep you know my opinions to myself on that regards mm -hmm. because that has ramifications of his own. You know, speaking on certain things, but mm -hmm. I can think of numerous situations that could result in that like stuff gets planted on people like all the time in this country i don't really know that much about the uk but all i'm going to say is it's it doesn't no, no, make no no bsm you can't carry weapons no, no you you can't the police officers there don't even carry weapons me and dp have, have been saying this uh, no i they, said i said stuff gets i said stuff gets planted i didn't say who does the plan i just said mm, stuff okay. gets planted Right. Yeah. And it, it, right. 100%. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just going to say that there are numerous situations, right? The mm -hmm. the whole slipping a Mickey thing in boxing, that is real. So if somebody would drug your water, 
I'm not putting anything past anybody. I'm just saying it is illogical <laughs> for Let Brian McIntyre at 53 years old to either right. purchase a gun in the UK to bring back to the United States and or go, go from the United States to the UK with a gun. Somehow, yeah, with a gun. And, and make yeah, it. It, it doesn't make sense. Right. And Getting it look. past our, our security, which like me and D Free have been, me, D Free, and uh, Just were talking about this. Since 9 11, the only people that are allowed to carry weapons are high end federal agents like the air marshals and like yeah. DEA or FBI agents. That's the only people that are allowed to go on without mm. having paperwork or to Thank carry you. a firearm onto a plane, period, and stuff like that. So mm. there was no way our, our TSA would have allowed him to go through security with a gun and stuff no. like that. I don't, and I, people I, are I, don't, I, don't, I don't have all the answers. Go ahead, I just know. No, I was just saying I don't have all the answers. I, I like to I like to get more information about the story. It just it's just, it's a whole lot of unanswered questions. That's all I know. It's a whole lot of unanswered That's where questions. our speculation and imagination comes in. Like yeah, what's yeah. possessing to do that? And I think as long as you do it within a reasonable manner, like I'm not gonna go like why Sam I you held back a little bit and I, I'm with you on that regard, but like that's why I say I will present what's out there, and then you know you'll say you know you just have questions. You get what I'm saying? I have questions because some stuff just don't make sense. And we can start with first things first. You got all right, you got caught with one with it being in your luggage. They said you ain't had a proper certificate. Okay, cool. How did you get it there? And again, like bro said, why if the threat would be you going into the unfamiliar territory, then why would you need it to bring it back to where you are from? It just don't make sense. Like your, your job is done. You're on your way. You out of here. You get what I'm saying? You don't need that. So this don't make sense to me. That's all. Yeah. The, there's 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 pieces that don't make sense to this story that it there was no way he could have got the gun through our security with how tough that is. No, exactly. it has become not at all since uh, 9 11. Like, there was no way possible that he could get it through those x ray machines and stuff like that. Like, right. that's where I I'm trying to understand if he and D Free just said it. If there's a malfunction with the x ray machines, they send you to another x ray machine in the first place, like to avoid this issue. Like, and some people get pat down. Like mm. some some people are randomly picked to get pat down, true. After the X-ray machine, so like I don't see it. I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. You're 100 right. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Right, Ash. Yeah. I mean, you know that that money, man. That green monster, man. Wait, it's something different. Wait, so. and if you're afraid, and if you are so afraid, in those high end fights, they have you in a five star hotel. You don't have to leave that motherfucker. Right. Right. Secondly, right. if it's right. if it's you. Going to the gym with um with uh Chris Ubex, you get bust to the gym in one of those I don't even know what you call it, but they're like they're they're like bigger than they're like smaller than a bus, but they're like bigger than like an SUV. Oh the 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 diesel pusher RVs. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like so you get you get bust to the gym and you get bust back with security. So where is this him being you know, fearful for his life with guys with knives. Like, and where we from, guys have guns. Knives are the least of our worries. Right. True. true. No, maybe, maybe he he's he he's doing this. Maybe uh, I'm just speculating. Maybe he he brought bought the gun there because there. Maybe he visited England once before and he got robbed. And stuff like that. Not but for stay in weeks, but like just on vacation. And maybe that's what, what prompted him to get the gun. Yeah, but you, you stay right, in the hotel. You don't it's tackle like the gun on the state. Bro, bro. Let's give it a beat. Right. It was, it was We've all been robbed. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I've never been robbed. So I'm just oh, asking shit. the question. Oh, you're <laughs> blessed. Right, D1. I don't know the knife is like like why well, some said knife at least they are worries man pull a knife out if you want and <laughs> think you good <laughs> you gonna find out how soon <laughs> how, how fast it, it go left 
yeah, YSM, but what what pisses me off, people are just jumping to conclusions saying he did this on purpose. I mean, yeah, like you other got, you gotta understand other, it's always gonna be irresponsible people. That's why whenever I present these topics, I feel like we do it in a responsible manner where people could appreciate the conversation. Like you get what I'm saying? It's always gonna be those wild people like dudes are saying he deserved five years, like the whole five years. Like but where that come from, dude. Why are you mad? First of all, why are you mad? <laughs> That's, you ain't going through the situation, and why are you wasting jail to survive? Like, what? We, we, we don't do that. We don't want to see this man caught up. I, I want to have a conversation on how this man should be in, a, in the conversations for the trainer of the year because that's good for boxing. He's doing his damn thing. So I, I, I appreciate the momentum he was building. And he went over there, had Chris Eubank looking like a like he would listen. <laughs> Better you know, than he's man. been his whole career. Like, listen, now that that was one of his better performances. I understand it's Liam Smith, but you're not gonna tell. I, I watched Chris Eubank a lot. That's one of his better performances, man. And he needed it. You get what I'm saying? Real I, patient, right? I said this. I said him on his best would beat Liam Smith on his best, and the reason why I feel like he would look like a version of his best because he had no choice. He couldn't afford the, the back-to-back losses. He spoke about it. He said that's different. He got to fear that. He don't want to lose back-to-back. So I felt like you know. He would come out here on his best behavior, and, and look what he did. So I picked him ahead of time and wait for the fight was over. And I know a lot of hell of a lot of people was picking him to lose again and by knockout. And I said see, I thought he would beat this dude, and he did. See, just I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm not talking about YouTube people like YouTube boxing fans that have their own channel. I'm talking about the actual sports media that's jumping to conclusions and stuff like yeah. ESPN and yeah. I and guess Fox that's why like. like I'm not as big as the ESPN, right? But we doing our thing. We growing. I said that's why we always do this in a responsible manner. You get what I'm saying? Is we got to stand out from the rest. Let them push their narratives, and you know, we gonna just put the information out there and give reasonable. You know, what I mean, commentary centered around these topics, man. They don't do that. We don't push narratives. We don't have an agenda, so it's always gonna be organic over here. Salute to Ricky Williams in the super chat. He said, "Yo." Did he say that guns was for protection? <laughs> and we ain't never got a box again. Well, 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 I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for you to get your just. Do- Yo, so I'm seeing people in the comments. Mm-hmm. I was referring to men, right? Majority of men have had a gun pulled on them and robbed, especially if you're a young man and you going out, right? Like the first time I was ever robbed was I was 14, waiting for the bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So maybe it's an East Coast thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But majority of us, you know. Right. You know I grew up in Florida. We didn't have time. that issue. <laughs> yeah. He's saying you got the time. You, did he you say look. Yeah. No, he's, he's saying Bomack did. Bomack said it. Um, and that's the thing. He ain't even get a statement out. From what I read in the whole article, I ain't get, they ain't get one statement from him. They just say he had a proper certificate. A loaded firearm, you know, he was charged with it, and he's gonna be held here at least until October 9th. You know, he get a hearing, and I'm like, damn, that's a, that's a little over a month. Two cents boxing salute, Queen. Appreciate you pulling up. See, this is where Bomac needs to get ahead of this and eliminate all the speculation and say, I, I got this gun for protection in England because Luke. I got robbed Luke. in another, in another. In, on vacation and stuff like that. He's still so, sitting. He's gonna be sitting till October 9th. I'm not sure he can do media. Right. No, that's so what I'm they saying. Get like, on the phone at least with in the a embassy. Tweet. Mm-hmm. At least in a tweet yeah. is what I'm saying. Man. Yeah, but he can't tweet either. That's, yeah, he can't do nothing. All right, right now they got they're gonna make sure of it too. Like he we won't be hearing probably nothing from him until until then. And that's the that's the messed up part. Yeah, like Yo, baby, he better get on the phone with the embassy. Mm-hmm. Contact Joe Biden. Something, man. Get to get the people, man. <laughs> get the people rallying, man. Hey, this- if y'all if y'all remember, y'all remember the last person that we had arrested overseas was the uh, the female basketball player for the WNBA, Brittany, Brittany Griner. Right? We, we we end up we end up in order for her to get out of jail, we end up having to release two uh, convicted uh, murderers. Yeah, yeah, two. That's like crazy. two high end gun runners, basically. Yeah. I hope yep. they so figure it out. He gets out. Me too. Uh, I'm rooting for him, man. I want to see that man continue to be great how, he, how he's been. You get what I'm saying? Keep doing your thing. Be- um, 
I because just of the out. scenario, guys, do you think he gets like does Bo Mac get his ability to get like the people who vote for the trainer of the year? Hold or on, do you think they? Hold t- on. I just thought about some. I just thought about some. Uh, what was what was the WNBA player arrested at? Russia. Russia. Where? Russia. Russia. Facts to uh, extent. Yeah, okay. Britain. That was, right. that was Russia. Yeah, okay. Was Russia. I was. I was. Like, I was. I was. I was about to say. Hold up. That's two. Two UK people. I mean, two people from America got arrested in the UK. Mm. Hold up. Something might be going on. <laughs> October 9th, my wife's birthday. So, so <laughs> b- back to boxing. The boxing question to me is, guys, the people who vote for the trainer of the year award, which is normally the media, do you think because of this situation with Bomax, do you think they probably take his name off consideration for the trainer of the year? Uh-huh. Stuff like that? I asked it. I was asking a similar question because I was asking, like, would this affect, you know, his status and, you know, his momentum right now? And you just never, you just never know. But I, you know, because it's yeah. boxing, right? Boxing ain't like that. We have to support, but that's, that's a I good question. I don't, it is, right? yeah, that, it, it's I, a good I, question I, because I don't think that it would, but we know how old media and how the boxing industry moves. So mm-hmm. they very well could hold this against him, but at the same token, who else is you gonna put as trainer of the year? Because ain't nobody else outside of Bowman had a year close to that. Unless unless Charlo beat Canelo, then you can say, okay, Derek James. Right, man. He's been doing his damn thing, man. So. Usyk, Usyk's trainer, maybe. Thank you. I think he just got the biggest win, like the biggest win of the year. You get what I'm saying? And then I think of the history attached to it. Then he, like I say, he turn around and go get Eubank, get his re- revenge. He's Eubank, him and Eubank spent the block. And even, you know, Liam Smith was down playing out. Going to do with four kids. Went out there. It's a bunch of dudes that they can give it to. You can give it to Calvin Ford. You can give it to, like, if Benavidez beats Andre, you can give it to uh, Jose Benavidez Sr. Like, they. It, yeah, the 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 guy that I'm looking at specifically is Usyk's trainer. Uh, isn't that Papachenko? Is he still with him? Yeah, don't they got the same trainer? I believe so. Yeah, no, it's Papachenko. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, same dude. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, can they give it to Red? Guy. Can they give it to Red Spikes no. or Esau Diangas? Nah, he, he he not gonna get it. He not gonna get it. Um, Calvin Ford. I I would say Calvin Ford would get it outside of Bomac if. If Tank comes back and fights somebody big, mm-hmm. if he now, fights Shakur, you mean? It, 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 well, he's not gonna fight Shakur because Shakur is, is a mandatory for the WBC. But if he fights somebody, say he fight Loma, and he beats Loma, then I can see Calvin Ford probably getting. Only Coach Calvin comes close. Yeah, I feel. You. I, I feel you say you think it's bigger than uh, Rosa was good. It's way bigger than Trainer of the Year. I just say that because I think you know. We think of his status and, and uh, you know, how is it going to affect the momentum that he um he's built? That's how uh, he, he's rolling, man. I got a, just, a, just do. I got a question for you though. Mm-hmm. Is he going to be able to go back to the UK and train Chris Eubank, um, or right. be his trainer in a fight? Right, that's the question I got. Right, man. Um, that, that makes sense he, because I, I, I could see. Man, I ain't gonna. They ain't gonna want him back over there, especially if it's a situation that work out where he don't have to do no substantial amount of time. Which I hope that's the case. I just don't see it both working out in the, in his favor, right? Saying say he work out, you know, whatever you know, situation work out in his favor, he don't do no extensive jail time. Maybe October 9th, he work it out, get up out of there, right? I don't see that that working out in his favor, and them wanting him back over there after a situation like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but. I mean, you see how they – I don't know. It's weird because I hear he had some prior situations too. We we seen how, you know, Australia did uh, build. So, just it, 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 a good question. Is he going to be allowed to go back over there and train? Who, wait, who – I have a question. Who's the second in command with Bomac that could – like, let's say he can't go back to England to trade Eubanks. Who does he have as his second in command that he could send over to train Eubanks? And stuff like that. Red Spikes and East Al Diegas. They would be the guys to go over. Mm. Probably be banned from the UK no matter what. That's what I'm saying. Andre was good with it. 
I even trained that I was trained a year. I was playing fire. I mean, yeah, yeah, nah, um, <clears throat> I want to, that, that's just, um, and, and I'm going I'm to call it that. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to be wrong, but I doubt it. I think that's an old media rumor. And sometimes you can't even tell the difference between the two because you got some of the newer people pushing narratives and, and lies too. I, I seriously doubt it. I mean, you can't find nowhere to validate that. It's kind of how they do it Wilder. When they can't figure out what's going on with him, they'll just make it up. They don't give a damn thing heard from him, somebody close to him. They don't give a damn. They don't hear a word from Wilder soon enough. People get desperate. They'll just make something up. And I think that's the case with the whole Yeah, re remember remember the after he... Derek James and People got to stop acting like the only, the only people mad is like... the. God, the people's that be in the chat, like the fans be mad. Like Earl Spence, the last time we seen him, didn't that man look like he was living life? He ain't pissed yeah. off about the law, so I don't think he's gonna react in a way that you know he emotional. Like fire Derrick James for what? They lost together. That's why I don't understand it. Like when you a team, I'm pretty sure that's how they approach it. You lose, you don't just say, Well, you did it, and he ain't looking at him like you did it. They looking like, yo, we lost. <clears throat> We're going to go correct some shit and we're going to get back to it. That's what we're going to do because that's what a real team do. Like, I, I just don't think nobody's mad at nobody. Like, the man just, you know, he didn't have it on the night. But it was on his, on his A game, A++ plus plus game, whatever you want to call it. I don't even want to get into it, but he lost. Like, it's fair. I'm going to use another example of what you're talking about where people didn't know what actually happened. Remember directly after – the the whole uh, blow up with Breland and uh, and Deontay, where people were saying that Deontay got physical with him and stuff like that. Yeah, That's they why just, they yeah they just push they just push it push the push the narratives, man. I guess because they it sells, but that's. That's what people like me here for to shoot that weird stuff down. And again, man, Earl Spencer, the man. At the end of the day, man, he took his loss same way he take his wins. Hey, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, dude. He took his loss the same way he took his wins, bro. Hey, just dude, did you did you did you know that um that referee that was in the Usyk and uh, uh Daniel Dubois fight was the same referee for the Usyk and AJ when Usyk got hit with a body shot and they called it the low blow. Ah, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. No, I didn't know that. that. It was the same, same back referee. He got hit with a body shot. The same, same shot. shot. Wow. The same shot. Yeah. Same Thank God, but I remember the shot referee. though. I remember that. And you telling me ain't nothing funny the about referee, that? The okay. Daniel Dubois should be a champion right now, and I like Usyk, <laughs> and I like Usyk a lot. I like, I like Usyk, but man, he got whipped. He did his body, man. I, that body shot. I, I keep saying it looked more clean than it was low. And I say this: his reaction told me just do everything I need to know. He did not react like somebody that got hit there. He reacted like somebody that was recovering from a body shot that hurt, or at least knocked the air yeah, out. That's what he. That's what he reacted. He reacted like it was a body shot. He didn't right. react like he got right. hit low. Yeah, I'm like, yo, you, your your body language is telling me it's telling on you, bro. And then you did this whole act, got you an Oscar. You get an unofficial Oscar. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure it's in the mail on his way to you now, because. Yeah, acting you did. So, I didn't respect. I know you that good of a fighter. I know I everybody, do. every every man on this panel, every man that's in the chat. When you get hit low, you do not sit down and, and, and cross your legs. That is not what you do. And, 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 <laughs> the and first again, thing you do is grab your nuts and you bend over. Mm -hmm. and, and exactly. That nigga sat down and, and crossed his and legs. Is, Andre, like, we were speaking on that this. Ain't before. That ain't like, no low blow. That's people a body was guy. asking. After the loss, who do you blame? And people was asking me that. And I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Blame only exists in situations where those people directly involved in the situation are not willing to hold themselves accountable. Then somebody has to be blamed. But when you're talking about an Earl Spence and a Derek James, you got two people that are going to hold themselves accountable. They're going to realize that as a team, the mistakes made, and they're going to go back to what they call a drawing board to correct those mistakes. And then they're going to get back to it. That's the difference. Like, that's why I, I just have a different mentality when they lost. It's like, I look at it as there's reasons and contributing factors as to why they lost. I don't look at it like, well, whose fault is it now? I, that That's the wrong mentality to have. How is they going to get something done trying to point out, you know, blame one or the other? Imagine Earl Spence saying, yo, you the reason I'm firing. Imagine Derek James saying, yo, the reason we lost is because of you. 
Like, just imagine that, though. Just imagine it. Ain't no way in hell right. they can do that. Those dudes, are different, in, in my opinion, you get what I'm saying? I just see they, they move differently. They're going to hold themselves accountable. So when you do that, nobody has to be blamed. And then it allows you to see the picture clear, go back, make the necessary, necessary corrections, and you get back to it. And a win, lose, or draw, you get back to it. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And I hope, you know, Bo Mack is able to, you know, this is and this is this, so this is another way. This is a this is another way that that you that you know that Earl Spence holds himself accountable. Right. He has never said that he was weight drained. This man has never said he was weight drained. Right. Right. You know he ain't getting no excuse. Everybody say if I had him, I would give him to you. He he was weight drained. They said he didn't look right. Earl Spence never gave an excuse why he lost. He just said, "I want the rematch, and hopefully it'll be at 54. I believe I can do better." Right. That's all he ever said. I'm telling you, and he ain't say nothing since then. That's what I'm telling you to do, and he ain't mad. Like that's why I don't understand why people. I don't watch boxing to be mad. I understand this is for my entertainment, so I'm gonna always have that in mind. This is supposed to be enjoyable. Like we, you know, whether you was rooting for him or rooting against him, don't matter. You seen a good fight, whether it was one sided or not. It was what it was, and you salute him and you wait till the next one. You don't have to be mad at it. Like, I don't understand and that. I, like you'll be a little gutted that your man lost, yeah. But being and mad, I hear, I, nah, hear a lot of people, I hear a lot of people like, saying in history. That's great for boxing. You know, I hear a lot of people saying Earl Spence don't need a rematch, but it was one sided. He don't need a rematch, I and mean, he's going to get beat up again. Do they realize if Muhammad Ali didn't rematch no. Joe Frazier, we wouldn't be talking about Muhammad Ali the way we're talking about <laughs> Talk him? About it, bro. <laughs> Muhammad <laughs> Ali got his ass whooped against Joe Frazier. Similar to the way that Earl Spence got his ass whooped. Similar. He took a lot of shots. ass whooping. And he came back and he beat the shit out of Joe Frazier in the second not fight. Really. And we're not saying Spence is going to do that. We just eat my bro giving you an example of why rematches serve a purpose in the sport. Like, it is what it is. I get it. I get it. I, and, you know, like, there's no way. But I, I'm I'm of the mindset. I'm, I'm not going so far as saying, ah, he's going to just do all of this and that and just beat him. But I'm... I think I'm reasonable when I say I think he can do considerably better in a rematch because he that's how that's how off I feel like of a performance he had. There's no way you can tell me I'm being crazy if I say he can do better than that. You get what I'm saying? And that's what he said. You think he can do better? So I, I like him, man. His name, he the truth for a reason, man. For more re more more reasons than one, man. And see, I, I don't even I don't even think the people listen to what Earl Spence said. He said, I hope it's at 154. I believe I can do better. He never told anybody that he will win the fight. He just said he believed he can do better. Yo, then, this is how he didn't like the way he he, he didn't like the, he didn't like his performance that night. He this, didn't say I this is how real he is. I win. Really? This is how real he is. I made a video on it. I don't know if people and I the hell with the video. Did you catch it when Earl Spence said it? The man said he he admitted to the, Terrence Crawford being the favorite. He should be the favorite. Like if you ever hear the dude, how honest he is and how realistic he is, like you just don't hear people speaking like that. He he, he could have easily gave the typical boxer answer, like, nah, I'm gonna show y'all why I should be no. He was like, bro, he should like you get what I'm saying. He considered what he's been through and he understand why people are betting on him. That's another thing that's going over people's head. For all y'all that's acting like the whole world picked Earl Spence, then why the hell was he a favorite? Obviously, somebody was, wasn't picking him. You get what I'm saying? There's <laughs> a lot of people that picked him. There's a lot more people that didn't. You get what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that did You know what I mean? It's just what it is. Got knocked out. And again, to, to, the, to make another point, the Chris Eubank fight, they told him he was going to get knocked out. They say he was going to get knocked out in the rematch. I leave leave uh, Liam Smith alone. He knocked you out. He gonna do it again. And then look, look, look. Imagine if he would if he would have had that train of thought. Oh, you know what? I ain't gonna fight him again. I'm gonna just leave him alone. I can't beat him. <laughs> nah, man. The man went there. He looked like a totally different fighter. And I get it. Oh boy, might have had some issues. I think that's real hurt. You injure yourself and said you had like a 42 pound weight cut. I think that's real. But aside from that, the performance that Chris Eubank would have beat him regardless. The way he fought Saturday, he would have beat the guy that, that he lost to because he just was in his bag. He was listening. And I, I don't know how the hell Bo Mack did it, but, man, did he, did he get his little bit of time that they've been working? 
you you heard it. Somebody in the chat kept pointing out. You hear Bo Mack, and after a while, started hearing the fact that he really was in there coaching his ass off, bro. Yeah, that was me, Jeff. <laughs> like, bro, appreciate you. Yeah, he's coaching his ass off. I, you know what I mean? I you kept yelling. I'm like, I don't hear him at first, and then I started to hear him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yelling, he was yelling through that whole fight. He right. was like, double up on the I was body. watching double the uh, I was watching the Sky Sports broadcast, so I guess they had a different vantage point as far as where they had the mics right. situated. So right. you could hear Bo Mack the entire fight screaming out Andre Ward before he threw the right hand, telling him, keep your fucking hands up. <laughs> mm, what's good with it, bro? How you feeling? Hardcore boxing. Use your man. Time up. Y'all go check out the good brother, J Hardcore, man. Go mm-hmm. check out the bro, man. Appreciate everybody in the building. Y'all smashed the like button. We're going to cook on some other stuff, mm-hmm. man. So I got some other stuff we're going to talk about, man. You know, Devil Santos is trolling my boy. But I just wanted to shoot this down. And I'm telling y'all it's coming from me. Maybe somebody else going to validate it later. This is my way of thinking. Errol Spence ain't the type of guy to just go blaming people when something go wrong. You get what I'm saying? He been with Derrick James. He been riding out with him. I think that's the best trainer for him the same way Bo Matt. Is the the best trainer for Terrence Crawford, and again, I'm glad he's he's having the success that's put him in a, in a light where people could kind of view him a bit differently and kind of get past the fact that you know he's a big guy, his weight this, his weight that, because it's clearly not stopping him from being great. It's clearly not stopping him from winning fights and training the absolute hell out of Terrence Crawford and getting the most out of him. And ain't nobody gonna convince me that they didn't put together a damn good game plan together and tell them how to execute it. And man, they did their homework as a team. And that's another reason why they won. All things real, they man, they did their homework, bro. Well, they had several game plans at that. There was an article that came out. I think it might have been Boxing Scene. Yeah, good, bro. And Terrence Crawford talked about how he confided in his team prior to going out there as to how they should start the fight. Like, yeah, what's going to be Paul. the initial game plan? Right in the block. They were telling them, like, just go out there and box. Don't brawl. Go out there and box first. So he had several several game plans. Another thing I saw, too, that was interesting was the way in which he defended the jab. By yes, man. How the hell, by bro? Keeping that, keeping that left hand right in front of his face. I could have so seen him catching that jab and firing his own at the same time. So I could have seen a lot of for that jab, man. I could have seen a lot of things coming, right? And I seen ways that both guys could win. But damn, I didn't see Terrence Crawford taking away Earl Spence's jab. I'd be lying if I said I seen that. Didn't see that, bro. <laughs> didn't see that. And I'm like, man, god damn it, bro. <laughs> Bud, Bud did his homework. They said they decided, like, right back there in the locker room to fight South Paul. You get what I'm saying? Right back there. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. BVO was good with it. Pat Bell was good, my bro. How you feeling? Appreciate you pointing said Bo Mack has been going for a while. Hey, Steve, I hope that's not the case. We know at least you got to sit there till October 9th, but I, I truly hope that it's some type of situation to work out for him because I just think that's the last piece that man deserved to be. Now, did he make a mistake? Probably true indeed, right? But do he deserve to be there for an extended period of time away from his family and people? Absolutely not, bro. Like, he wasn't on no criminal-type behavior. And I gotta count, man. Something, man. Like, come on, man. And then get him saying something, man. You you gotta you gotta you gotta make something happen, man. I don't wanna see nobody go down for something like that. And I, I really can't wait to actually hear a statement from him. I love to hear the whole process of how it got in his bag to begin with. You get what I'm saying? I would love to know. You know what I'm saying just straight from him. Give him saying I love to know. It's weird, man. It's weird, but man, salute to him, man. He's been doing his thing. And again, whenever boxing, somebody in boxing is excelling and, and, and having this level of success is always great for the overall sport because this don't take away the greatness of Derrick James. Great Derrick James just was trainer of the year. You get what I'm saying? So he's still a great trainer. Then when you got a bow mat making a damn case as to why he should be. You, you, it's great for the sport. You got two trainers and people just got to give them his just do. And if they don't, then I will. And I don't have no problem doing it because I ain't t- never to- tore him down. So salute to Bo Mack. Hopefully work his situation out, man. He's been, he been, he been riding and building a, too much momentum for this setback. He really don't need it. You get what I'm saying? So salute to him. Black Belt, what's good with it? Crawford's paying attention to Tangra's Barrios and Tangra's Ryan working on catching. That with that lead left hand, it's... We just talk about it, man. Um, I think Tank Davis is one of the um the best at taking away and manipulating the lead hand of his opponent. Definitely. 
people ignore I think, it because I think of the, what, 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 uh, the difference with Crawford though was mm -hmm. he was operating out of that long guard. Not 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 Crawford. Uh, Tank Tank was operating out that long guard. Bud was just catching that shit just like right in front of his face. It was, it was yeah. crazy, man. It was beautiful to see. And it was just real simple and subtle, too. It's one of those things where you don't even see it in real time. Right. Because the action is so fast. You got to slow right. it down to catch it. Facts. Subtlety. Facts, Jay. Facts. He definitely. I feel like he, you know, him. I mean, you and you, you got Calvin Ford for real. For me. Yeah, I mean, and I ain't just saying that. I mean, for real, Tank, it was back-to-back -back fights. So like, and then you can't ignore the numbers. Like, they try to downplay, call it an exhibition, man. That was the most meaningful fight. You, you get what I'm saying? Number-wise of this year. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's hard to ignore that, right? So, I don't know, man. But, again, the reason why I was leaning towards Bo, man, because of the win and the significance of it. And and we know undoubtedly he pretty much beat, especially when it comes to in his class of fighters, right? He beat definitely for sure the other best fighter in the division. And it was for history. You get what I'm saying? Not just for undisputed history on his side. It's the second time he's done in the first mother to do it. So I think that might give him an edge. Maybe you want to throw the Eubank maybe the bonus you can because and that's coming off a loss. To that guy that's getting revenge and not having a ton of time to work with that guy but being able to produce a, a favorable result and a knockout and he didn't lose a round dude that was one of the best performances of his career easy easy beat the hell out of beefy kind of weird that he did all that traveling and they don't find it until he's on his way home sounds and set up to me and we we free to talk about it because we real man hardcore and again it, that don't have to be the case right but it, I, I could understand why people were thinking that just don't make sense. And we over here, we ain't mad. We ain't got to be mathematicians, right? But we, we know math and we do math and we know the math ain't math and with the situation for right now and stuff just simply is not adding up. You get what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all smashing that like button for your bro, man. Smash that like button. Tax and guns. The government don't play over there. Yeah, man. They don't play about them guns over there in uh, the UK. You know, they don't play. They don't play. He did catch and shoot. Right, right. He was, he was, it was smart, man. Game plan. That's that's what you call doing your homework and raising your level on the night for the guy that you're in there with. He was able to do that. That's what great fighters are able to do. When you put them in there while the great fighters, they don't fold. They raise their level. And, and that's what he did. Yeah, I think Crawford is special, man. I can't wait to see him again. I really wish he would fight Boots before he left the division, but I don't think we'll get that fight. L Dub boxing, my bro. What's good with the L Dub? Y'all go sub to the Brody L Dub as well. Go check him out, man. Y'all love good boxing, great boxing information, man. The insight, man. That's your guy, man. Tap in, tap in, and tap into mm -hmm. the rest of the fam up here. We got BVO, my bro D Free. You know, salute to everybody in the building. Yeah, man. It's unfortunate that five year minimum stuff is weak. It's weak as hell. But Again, man, salute to him, prayers to him. Hopefully that situation work out as best it can in his favor and he able to resume his career and his free, you know, get his freedom more, more, more so anything. That's weak. I ain't I ain't wish each other no man. Yo, salute to the chat, bro. Salute to the levity of the chat. Yeah, yeah, especially now. I wanna um circle back on what William old school Arn said, man. You know, Talk don't you. know. What's going on with his relationship or the former relationship that he had with mm -hmm. Kenan? Mm -hmm. You know, he's over in his his town, his neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. If there's some unsettled things going on right there, maybe that's why we see what's going on right now. Because, like you said, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make logical sense for him to do that, mm -hmm. knowing that he's on foreign soil, knowing that Britain Griner just had possession of marijuana. Right, and she got a lot of stuff. Right. Like you said, for marijuana, we had to right. let off two known killers and drug I mean, and gun traffickers out of the prison just to get her up out of it. So yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, as far as the trainer, the real common. I mean, his marriage should be speaking on that that alone. Mm -hmm. And he he had built a body of work that's marriage merit uh, meritorious of it, and he should be rewarded with it. Right. But like you said, what's first and foremost right now is that he should be 
looking for his safety, his his uh, freedom. And, you know, we should be pushing forward as a nation too, man. Because there's too many times and stuff like that happens where we go across. People come over here freely navigate themselves around here. We go over the crisis, and our people is always detained. Right. You got you to respect the rules, though. You do. Well, you do we know rules, that he man. didn't? Do we know that he didn't? I think. That's, I think that's, the, that's the thing I, I would say that I would. I would. I would say to that is that from somebody from traveling, man, you got to remember you're not in the United States. I don't care what you feel. You know, it sounds good. It might even make you feel good, but you got to follow the rules when you're on porn. Oh, yeah, 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 but the yeah. reason why he, he being open to it is because, you you know, we still want to know that big question that we all got, right? I think we all got it, how it get there, right? Because if it was there coming back, you know what I mean? You would think maybe was it there on the way. You get what I'm saying? And if so, how? So there's some just some, some little blanks and some holes in there that need some filling and i think the only way we get some filling is when we hear it from them. it's just unfortunate you know rules are rules and i did read that they said something about a lack of the proper certificate so mm -hmm. i'm guessing some along the lines of paperwork not being straight right but right who would who would you know pretty much you would have to forget about it to be traveling back you get what i'm saying and, and that's it's, it's hard to forget about traveling with a gun so there's a lot of little questions we got and it's it's not about um blaming nobody because i think at the end of the day as a man you're gonna hold yourself accountable but there is still a story to, to be told and there is right. still an explanation whether anybody agrees or disagrees with it right it's still a story to be told and i think you know when you get his hearing on the 9th of October, <clears throat> which is unfortunately over a month away, we'll probably get some more clarity to it. But it is, it's, it's unfortunate, but man, it's, it's, just, it's South London, man, they're giving people like 10, 15 years for knives. So, I mean, let alone a weapon. I mean, yeah. it's just, I'm only, I'm only saying it because I've been blessed to travel. And it's like, when you over there, especially as a black person, you got to be on your P's and Q's, man, because you know, we don't get the benefit of the doubt like everybody else. We just don't. I don't care where you go on the planet. True. You don't get the benefit of the doubt. You gotta know your gun laws when you're traveling. I, you know, from what I understand, I think that's just important to know that. Not saying he didn't know it, but you, you know, you want to cross your T's and dot your eyes when you travel. Okay. Hey, that's a fact. There's like no guns over there. Like there's no guns. Like when you go overseas, there is no guns. That's an American right. thing. Right, that's why people be stabbed. There's so many stabbings and things like that over there. They run around with knives, nah, crazy. So, yeah, the same way people run around our areas, different areas with guns, they run around with knives the same way, and they 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 despise the guns so much so that the the penalties for them is so steep that it's not even worth the chance. So again, I would think, and I don't believe this was his first time over there, so I would think he would, you know have some type of understanding of, you know, how it go over there. So again, w would he be willing to take this chance? Because that's pretty much without having a, the all the answers to the questions, this is what we'd be able to come up with, right? Let's just say if he is traveling, so you really was willing to take the chance of them not detecting a firearm, like that you got a better chance at going outside your house and seeing a rain, a unicorn take off in the sky. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's no way that you could have been thinking that way. So that's why I would love to hear from him. But again, it's just one of them situations where you got to wait and see. You know what I'm saying? Wait and see. So salute to Bo Mac, man. Prayers to him. And I think I'm, I'm optimistic because I like to be optimistic that things will work out in his favor, man. For that reason, we're usually more cautious. Right? Right, Shower. And again, that's why I ain't demonizing that man for toting. I just wish his, his situation would have been squared away so he wouldn't even have to deal with this. We'll see, but again, moving past this, I'll speak on this again briefly. Like, again, with the Earl Spence uh, thing, I just think that's another, another narrative. And again, when, when, they don't, when they don't hear from you, they start making up lies. That's something that we've seen them do time and time again with Wilder. I don't expect no knee jerk reaction and him to just go off and fire Derek James, somebody that he's got to the mountaintop with. I don't see no cause and no no reason for, for them to split up over no one loss. Just like I don't think he should retire over no one loss. I think that's that's people over exaggerating. And um again, Earl Spence, I expect to see Derek James in his corner the next time he get in the ring. 
salute to him and the hell with people pushing that false narrative that I believe is a narrative, another narrative, or just a flat out bad rumor that he fired Derek James because he lost and he blaming him. And then people are just still without even no, no, no research, no nothing. They'll just, you know, make their assumptions. Oh, he fired Derek James because he couldn't follow the game plan and this and this and that. You gonna you get what I'm saying? You don't know who people want to blame. Some people want to blame Derek James and say he ain't have no game plan for him. He ain't have no plan B. He didn't have him prepared. It was bad coaching this, bad coaching that. And you got people that want to blame Earl Spence, but that's that conquer and divide kind of mentality. If they thought like that as individuals, they damn sure wouldn't have been nowhere as nearly as successful as what they've been. You get what I'm saying? Blaming each other. So again, you talk about two guys that I truly believe are going to hold themselves accountable and they're going to identify what they believe are the mistakes and they're going to try to correct them as best they see fit and they're going to go back in there again for a rematch and, and god willing that bo mac can have his situation worked out so he could be right in the corner of Terrence crawford for this rematch that we supposedly gonna get somewhere around december's from what i'm hearing so salute to earl spence Terrence crawford bo mac and derrick james you know what I mean, but uh, yeah, I know. yeah, we gotta be vigilant, man, of these folks out here spreading yeah. these rumors and narratives uh -huh. because I saw the source of it. It was mm -hmm. a Canelo fan page on Twitter. Right, if that doesn't raise your antennas. Right, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and I don't know what well, well. People just started reposting, reposting, right. and then now right. it just took on a life of its own. And now here I see, we man. are. Yeah, get them rumors out of here, man. That's what's wrong with boxing. We need solid information that we could build on, not not weird ass rumors that that take take away credit from one fight or another. Y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel if y'all haven't, man. Make sure y'all notifications on. We gonna keep rolling. Something else I seen. We gonna laugh at, at Edwin De Los Santos. He funny. He been true. He been on Shakur Helm. It's funny because. One one reason why I respect him because I do believe everybody that he's tagged and mentioned about fighting, I really think he'll fight. Him. I do. I think he's one of those guys. I don't, he don't have an O no more to protect, and um, he's been winning. You know, um, I think he's been building some momentum. Like I've been saying about these guys, they've been getting some uh, solid wins under his belt. So I know he's feeling like he could take on the world right now, but I uh, I hope he get the uh, what he's looking for. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen something with Oscar De La Hoya, and I don't know about this Crawford situation with Crawford talking about going up to 68. One minute he says no, then he says yeah, then you see somewhere where he's saying no again. But, you know, you got some mixed um, opinions as to what would happen if they were to fight each other, man. So I got a clip from um, Oscar De La Hoya speaking on it. What he think and what his his take was uh I don't even know if to say it's surprising at this point or do you take it with a grain of salt because since uh Canelo's left Oscar man I, I ain't he ain't had nothing good to say about Canelo. Beat Canelo? Terence Crawford will beat Canelo anytime again, just with the skill set right, alone. Please. Terence Crawford is a master. He will make him. Playing over there and freezing right here. Y'all give me a second. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all know Oscar always running them jibs. He ain't never short on words. Like I said, he ain't has nothing, nothing good to say about Canelo since Canelo left his ass. So everything he says, you know, I guess you could take it with a grain of salt because he don't really, <laughs> I ain't hear him say nothing good about Canelo Alvarez seriously since he left. Nothing. Yeah, Thug and D was good with it, fam. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I say. That's funny. You got to give it to him, man. It's, I don't even know if to call it. It's trolling. And it's. I think he's serious, though. Like, I think he, he really do want to fight with Shakur. I think he understand the talent that he is, and he'll be – he thinks he can beat him. You give him I really believe that he believes in, in himself. That's why I would want to see the fight. I don't think he clout chasing. See, I'm a different dude. This was somebody else and a, a different set of fans. They'd be yelling, cloud chasing. Nah, I think he really won a chance, you know, a crack at him. So, I mean, maybe he get his shot down the line. All you got to do is keep winning, right? 
Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's great banter, too, because he's channeling his inner Shakur. This is his version of the sign the contract. Right. Exactly. Like, <laughs> in the bottom. This I said that. I said that. It. It's a nice touch. Like, it's, it's, it's fun for boxing. Like, I like to have fun with this stuff. You, It shouldn't make you mad that he's calling him out. It's fun. It's, it's funny. And it's funny. He's speaking English. <laughs> they was going back and forth in the, in the, in the comments. It, it's fun, man. But let, let's listen to Oscar. See what he had to say about, you know, his thoughts on Crawford challenging Canelo, his former uh, uh, bestie. Canelo with the concrete feet. He will make yeah, Canelo Marco. look like a child. Can he beat wow. Canelo? Yeah. Terrence Crawford will beat Canelo anytime. Just with the skill set alone, Terrence Crawford is a master. He will make him look like a child. And that's just my boxing wow. experience. Do I want Canelo to win? Yes. You know, I promoted Canelo and I, I want the best for him. And then I want the best for any fighter. But from a promoter's view, from an expert view, from a fighter's view, and don't forget it, it's 10 world titles in six divisions. From that perspective, Crawford will beat him in a master performance, master class any given day. Why, why can he overcome the three weight divisions? Talent. Talent alone. Look at Canelo's footwork. It's it, he's he's walking on cement. Look at Crawford's wow. footwork. He he coordinates it with his upper body. His footwork it's just incredible. He sounds like a super fan. He wants to sign Crawford. <laughs> he try, he's still hoping to get that Crawford and Virgil Ortiz fight, huh? <laughs> nice pitch, Oscar. I see where you go with it. You feel like Crawford going to 54. You say Virgil will be going up there. Ah, uh, you still hoping for that fight, huh? You gonna butter that man up like that. But nah, he, he did speak some truth. You know, Canelo ain't got the fastest feet. Some some say it looked like he's stuck in cement. Um, excuse me, upper body something different though. Still got the fast hands. Um, good combinations, good good body punching. He just don't throw throw a lot of punches, a ton of punches, and he fighting spurts. But if you could overcome that, then you could beat Canelo Alvarez, and that's what Char Charlo is gonna have to overcome. A guy that is 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 uh, particularly strong, especially early. He's probably going to be strong throughout the whole fight, I believe. But I do think early, especially early, the first four to six rounds, he's particularly strong, just like most fighters are. And I think after you get to the you know second half of the fight, I think that's where he becomes a little more human, as as they call it, right? And I think um, that second half of the fight is is going to be even more important than the first half. I think the first half of the fight. Charlo's really gonna have to be smart, navigate those rounds and, and, and try to, you know, win as many as the, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't wanna find yourself behind too many rounds after the first half of the fight is over. You get what I'm saying? If you can keep the fight manageable and close, and I ain't trying to say you can't dominate, right? But you know, I'm, I'm just being realistic. I don't expect to see that because Canelo ain't gonna allow, he gonna fight back, right? So. You 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 manage that first half of the fight. When you get to the back half of the fight, that's where you try to take over because that's why I believe he slows down a bit. And um, I think that's where uh, Charlo's condition, if it's A1, things like that, you just never know how he's going to carry this extra weight, right? So that's the that's the biggest unknown for me about, the, you know, in that fight is how he's going to be able to uh, perform with the added weight. You get what I'm saying? So... If he's able to still maintain his condition and his lateral movement and, you know, being his mobility and things like that, man, his fluidity, that's what's important. Like, you need that for Canelo because it's a tricky dude, man. He got a ton of experience and he's not going to go down easy. You know what I'm saying? He's not. But, it, again, it's a, it's a winnable fight for, um, for uh, Charlo, in my opinion, so. It's going to be interesting to see, but uh, it's going to be an uphill battle because he's fighting Canelo, the judges, and some more shit. So we're going to see. Be yeah. in boxing news. What's good with it, bro? How you feeling? But again, and to your point about Canelo, uh, Canelo being economical. Sorry to cut you off, Judge. Nah, but good, even to your point about Canelo being economical, I think that's another reason why it's tough to win fights against him because most judges, they're looking at clean, effective. And Can Canelo don't really waste too much. Mm -hmm. True. So even if you out, even if you out throw him, and you just touching him or you just glancing, because he rolls with a lot of shots too, mm -hmm. and then he hits you with maybe five or six big shots over the course of a round, but he only threw a handful of shots. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's tough to win against him. Right. Right. It is. It is. And, he, and he, he's he, heard those whispers about his gas tank, too. You've seen he's out right. there training in altitude now, right. working on his conditioning. So. Right. You see what I'm saying? That, and that's he's, exactly <laughs> why I expect him to be a better version Ooh. of himself than we've seen in these last few fights. And he know he know what time it is, man. Like, I think he, he tried to butter up Charlo a little bit, too. Told him he the better Charlo. Got the better resume, all that. <laughs> Try and that, keep it Charlo nice and calm, huh? I say, yeah, as soon as you give uh, Charlo the slightest bit of, uh, you know, he had taken and run with it, but it's been a lot of mutual respect on both both sides. So you gonna see, man, but he is, he he, he is buttering up a little bit though. I, I say he's still hoping for that Virgil Ortiz fight with Crawford and uh, Virgil. Oscar is anyway, but Again, um, to be honest, um, I don't think we'll see Crawford at 68. I know he said it, he said it, not said it, said it. I don't even know where he's staying at, at this point in terms of if he'll really fight at 68. But if I'm just going to go for what I'm thinking, my guess is I don't think we'll see him there. I think it'll be a, a lot. It'll be asking a lot. And I think that would be the biggest problem in there, going in there with Canelo. It won't be um, a matter of skill at all. Like, he'll be fine in that department. But it... It's a matter of size. And he even said it out of his own mouth. So, again, it'd be crazy to hear how he said, you know, they got weight classes for a reason. And he's 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 not too proud to say that he can't beat any and everybody in the world. Like, he's not one of those people just running around saying he'll beat any and everybody. He said something along those lines. So, <clears throat> to hear him say that and then, you know, switch it and say, well, you know, I'll fight him at 68. Like, I just don't know. Like, that's wishful thinking, bro. Salute to the Queen, Miss Joette, in the super chat. Come on, y'all, let's support do all the hours he put in. Oh, salute to the Queen, recognizing the, the work for our entertainment. Salute to everybody in the building that continues to support the grind. Much appreciated to the Queen, man. And salute to the, my bros on the panel. And we ain't never with. got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these red, but, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Shit. I'd love to see it though. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I'll say nah. this too. I thought about this earlier, Just. Sparky was good. The event and... that they have that rematch, well, not if and when they had the rematch, but if they had the rematch right. at 154, do you think that makes the transition to possibly going to 168 a little bit easier for him? My bad. You're, you, you said if he went to 54 first? And then go to but it's riding away right now. He's not gonna fight Canelo. No. No, yeah, he just, you know, he riding the moment right now. And I don't even I wouldn't even be mad at him if he didn't. But my thing is this when it pertains to Crawford, we know he got the rematch to to handle, right? And that's gonna be at fifty four more times more than likely, right? It's, they're both done, it seemed like at forty seven. So I think that takes the boots fight definitely, definitely off the table, but it also leads the possibility for other fights for him at 154. But how many, I don't know, because I don't think he has a ton of fights left, right? And I just don't know if he'll really be willing to jump up that many weight classes and fight Canelo. You get what I'm saying? Like, how would that look? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but that, that was my and question. Again, like um, you said, you did. At 54, you said, right? would be kind of like a step 268. Mm-hmm. Probably go to 54 first. You said get the fight there and then kind of the rematch with, with Spence because yeah. EJ was saying he wanted the rematch at 54. He would feel a lot right. better at 54 as opposed to trying to make 147 again. Right. right. And then go to 68. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think one thing works in his favor is this is um you know going to going to 68, I think that 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 uh Terrence Crawford might feel even stronger, even mm -hmm. Even a little bit more, even a little bit more uh, vigorous. Hey, at one fifty, I want to say similar to like Manny Pacquiao. Cause Manny, <laughs> Manny Pacquiao was going up. Yeah, yeah he wasn't cutting too much to get to one forty-seven. Yeah. It's possible, so, man, because this dude definitely a special fighter for sure. So, I mean, he's definitely disciplined in that regard with his body. So, I mean, I, I just say this, man. It's not going to be a fight that he'll be in in the boxing ring, professional boxing ring, that he don't have a very good chance at winning. 
even if that's way up there. Like it won't just be no open and shut case, even if the size of Canelo Alvarez end up being too much for him. Like if that ends up being the case or the power, you know what I'm saying? Just being too big, right? But it still would be like, <clears throat> remember, remember how uh American looked against Canelo. Man, the dude was winning every single round until he got caught. You get what I'm saying? So I ain't say, I can see. I mean, no disrespect to Amir Khan, but we also saw that with Breedis Prescott, too, I think at like 140 or whatever weight class that was. Mm-hmm. At. I can't remember when they fought, but it wasn't uh-huh. It wasn't that high. And he still got clipped. Amir Khan is just right. chinny. It don't matter where yeah, he, is. he is. So you <laughs> it off for, it you don't matter know, where you put that man. He'll be able to have some level of success for sure. But the key, I guess, would be for me against him and Canelo is maintaining that. So I, I get I get what uh you know Oscar is trying to say, but I think he being an extra, like he landed on a little thick on the side of Crawford saying he'll make he'll just make Canelo look like a child. Like <laughs> nah, I don't think he'll just make him look like a child, but you can I mean, it's, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Yeah. It's not outside the realm of possibility. You can embarrass him a bit. I could, I could definitely, most certainly see you embarrassing him a bit. You get what I'm saying? I can see that. But, again, it, it's funny because, right, him as a promoter and a former fighter, this is how he feels, right, for a guy that promoted, you know, Canelo Alvarez, and he used to fight himself, right? He, he This is how he feel about Crawford, Oscar De La Hoya. But then you got a guy in Bob Arum that – went the opposite way with it you get what i'm saying and, and and not and he well so much not even with the crawford fighting canelo he talked about charlo so my thought my thing would be what would his thoughts be if 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 crawford would actually fight canelo because he said charlo is uh you know is gonna get beat easily and he you know little charlo ain't nothing like that's what he said so if I wonder if you feel like you know Canelo is just gonna walk through Charlo, then what would you think? You know, if Crawford were to go up there and fight f- fight him, being that you you know he was a guy that you did you did promote at one point, so I just wonder what would his thoughts be. But I, it's interesting these different takes on how these fights would play out. But again, man, uh, we the only one I think came close to closest to making Canelo look like a child was Floyd. I don't think nobody came close to that. I think not in that way. You know, Larry did a pretty damn good job. Um, still didn't do it the way Floyd did it. Triple G in that first fight, he did his thing there too. And uh, of course, Dimitri Beaver beat his ass. Dimitri Beaver embarrassed him pretty good too. Salute to my bro Zoom verse, man. Y'all sub to the Brody Zoom. Salute to the Queen, Miss Joe as well. Global entry. Yeah, I see you, Marcos. It could be some foul play, man. We did. We sure going to find out, though. Oscar, see, my, my thing about Canelo. Bud's power is this, though. It's not like it's not like um, he's just starching people with just brute strength. A lot of well, a lot of his power comes from the setup. Him punching in between shots. So I, I think that is something that may very well po- uh, translate up to 168 because, again, mm-hmm. he's not just – He's walking people in the shots. Mm-hmm. You got to be real vigilant they against that dude. To 168 means he's fighting dudes that weigh in like 180 and used to taking punches and hitting dudes at those weight classes. Yeah. Yeah. That again. So that'd be the biggest concern for me, A1, is the, you know, the size. I think you get what I'm saying. And again, I, I feel like if he had to grow into 147, the notion of you just jumping up to 68, even if you had a fight at 54 without acclimating, because think about it, you essentially skip 60 and go to 68. That would still be a significant jump. It would just be – it's a lot. You know what I mean? It's a lot on you. But like I said, skill-wise, he'll be just fine. But it would be a matter of consistency and and, and if the, the weight and the size would be too much for him. You get what I'm saying? So My biggest concern would be his – uh his speed and his reaction mm-hmm. have all of that. Mm-hmm. If he's, if he's able to sustain that, I don't really have um, too many words for him in that regard. Cause I understand where you're coming from a one and you make a fair point. Mm-hmm. The other side of that though, is we got to remember Canelo isn't, and I'm using air quotes. <laughs> he isn't a mm-hmm. natural 168 either. So a lot of those mm-hmm. guys that he fought at 68 and 175 
he had a significant speed advantage over those guys because he was the smaller guy coming up. Mm -hmm. True. So for me, if Bud can maintain his his speed and his reaction and be able to uh, counter, I see him doing just fine. Right. All right, I'm with you. I'm with you on that for sure. I'm with you. But uh, again, man, at least we know. Um, you know, we got EJ that uh, bless you, that activated his rematch clause. So that's the fight. I guess we're gonna be, you know, looking forward to next at 154. And like I said, from that point on, I just don't think Bug gonna have too many more fights left after that rematch. I, I see him maybe one two at the absolute most and that's just me you know fights remaining but we'll see if he could find a way to um you know give us another great fight outside of ej and i'm not no slight to his resume but even canelo has some interesting um comments on bud crawford he said uh you know he feel like you know great fighter talented fighter but he said he only fought he only fought and beat one great fighter and earl spence he said outside of that you know, he ain't got no other great fights and great fighters on his resume. So that was interesting for him to say that. So, you know, a lot of people will kind of agree with those uh, those thoughts. And um, that's what I question the most. Like, we, we understand the rematch, right? But my thing is, is it another f fight that you're going to get up, give us that we can consider, like, opponent-wise, that would be a great fight before you hang it up? That would be, you know, and with Charlo being tied up for potentially two fights, potentially, like we just don't know how that how that cookie will crumble. But we'll, we'll see, though. We'll see. We will see, man. I just I'm ready to see every good fight that boxing got for us this year has been one of the best years in boxing for sure. So you honestly think Canelo knock but but out Crawford look good until he gets chin check. That's that's my that's my favorite B dog. Like, would it be one of those? Uh, you know, that's why I brought up the American situation because American was doing great all the way up until he wasn't right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but what Mosley was indicate was that he personally didn't have the same sting though he felt powerful, right? Dude Blue has made a video saying that Blue Mac checked his bags and they were fine. Then for some reason they checked him again and found a gun and clip. But it's yeah, man. Wow, that's crazy. Salute to uh, Blue Man. I that's 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 wild. I would love to look into it and see if I can find it anywhere else. You get what I'm saying? So, but I'm I'm for all these great fights, y'all. Salute to everybody in the building. Um, the Cam J Network was good, fam. How you feeling? But yeah, man. Um, mm, that's that's definitely. I I don't know. I would love to know where he got it from. Maybe I could hit him and ask him. But that's that's definitely fishy. You, nonetheless, you can't say it ain't. If that truly happened, like you check his bags and it's fine, then double check and then it's a gun in there. I don't care what you say. If that ain't a red flag, then you, you man, I don't know what is. You get what I'm saying? If that were true, so I just I just don't know. But a salute to Blue. I know he probably got that information from somewhere to say it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but I, who knows, man? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? But salute to Oscar, man. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> if you're thinking, I just don't think we we'll ever see uh, Bud Crawford and um. Canelo Alvarez, wishful thinking though for sure. I just know I'm here for it. I do agree though that um, oh yeah, Oscar I'm definitely probably 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 buttering him up, right? Keep his name in the headlines, maybe possibly line something up because it is looking a little shaky at Golden Boy. Who they got like uh, uh Floyd Schofield? We don't know what's happening with Virgil. Uh -huh. I'm in your house, Virgil ass, uh. Well, I know what he said. I know people feel like Virgil done enrolled in school, and because of that, like, that's an indicator right there that boxing is on the back burner or something like that, and his career could be over. I know that's a speculation, but I don't want to run with that because, again, Oscar did say, you know, I do. I'm in your house. I'm in if I see your op, I got it on me, then we... Oh, my bad. Damn, my bad, y'all.
And this is the funny part. I ain't mean to play music because I don't want the copyright. <laughs> this is the funny part, bro. Yo, dude playing Al B. Al. This man is from the Dominican Republic. This man was in Newark, New Jersey, talking slick to Shakur, playing Al B. Al, who was also a rapper from Newark, New Jersey, that I listened to. Yeah, this is funny, bro. I'm in your house, Chakor. If I see your app, I got it on me, then we banging now. I'm in your house, Chakor. I respect it. I respect it. Edward Davis Santos. Man, yeah, Edward said, I'm in your house, Chakor. Yo, man, Chakor said, you be careful. He says, your time coming soon. You're going to get what you're looking for. He told him he's going get, to get what he's looking for. He said, um, just make sure you stay. What did he say? He told him to stay somewhere. Acting crazy, he says you should be good acting crazy. Basically, tell him don't be in the hood acting acting silly like that out there and playing that I'll be out talk about your core you looking for. Him. <laughs> but man, that's funny, man. Salute to Edward De Los Santos, bro. I really believe him. I think he'll fight your core. I just hope he continue to win so the opportunities for him get better. Because that is a fight that I wouldn't mind seeing. But I, I definitely much rather the uh, Frank Martin smoke for sure. For sure, man. For sure, you think it's some foul play with Bo Mac? You hope he ain't do this. He got too much good going for himself to be in this type of time. That's what I say, man. And that double bag check, if that story pan out, that's super wild, man. I in your house, your core. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's your core. You know, yeah, it's your core in, in, in the comment section responding to him. That's how you know it's, it's, it's real. You see it. That's how you know you can't ignore it. But people, that's how I know. <clears throat> when people don't like a fighter or or they just looking for him to lose because every little person that call him out, they, they want him to fight him like right now. Like, yeah, why, why he ain't fighting him right now? Why school ain't fighting that with Del Santos? He calling his name. I don't want to hear that everybody talking to him. He calling his name. He ain't just called his name. He also called the dude that he's fighting too. He tagged Frank Martin as well. He called out Pitbull Cruz. And it's another one or two names that he mentioned as well. Like he's been called uh he mentioned um Chris Colbert, you get what I'm saying? He be, he been mentioning a lot of people, so it's funny, but to see him come all the way to Newark to do that, that's funny, bro. That's funny. I don't know if he just had if he had anything going on out there, if he had any reason at all to be there, but he was there. <laughs> bro was by the prudential center, yo. Jacora, I mean you house. Oh man, that's funny, bro. Illegal tenor, you getting active. <laughs> yeah, he told him stay downtown, acting crazy, right? He says you should be good down there, acting crazy. Look at him. That De Los Santos flicked up in the hood. Look at <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> he shot out, bro. Nah, he got it, man. This one, man. He get he get two, three stars for this one, bro. For real. He definitely get points on the board for this. This is funny, bro. Stuff like this is good for boxing, bro. Like, you little call out here, there, never hurt nobody, bro. And like I said, I'll give him credit because I really do believe that he's brave enough and willing enough and believe in his, his talent enough to get in there with him. So I definitely don't mind seeing him do this. You know what I'm saying? He might be filling himself a little bit. He um, he got a couple solid wins under his belt. You know what I'm saying? He might be feeling good. You know what I'm saying? I, I look, I, I, I'll tune into it. You get what I'm saying? He said illegal tender, right? Bro, watching illegal tender getting active, he said. He came with his little belt on his shoulder, right? He came with the little belt. That was Shakur fight. That was sounds like the fight with Mark. As soon as Shakur wins, yeah, right. Because it might be, it might, I, but you, you just never know how things will work out, right? You just never know. Like, I, I don't count anything out, but I get you because that's kind of my thoughts, too. You get what I'm saying? I feel like once he beat a guy like Martin. <clears throat> that'll kind of put even more separation in between that fight happening. But it's just one for some odd reason that people, you know, not everybody, but some people really feel like it should happen. I'm cool with it, but, you know, I don't need to, I don't feel like I really need to see it to know what will happen, but I, I don't, you know, all fights need to happen, right? I could think what I want. He got to prove it, right? But I, I just think that the De, De, De Santos is a bit of a front runner. He's a good fighter, can box. He got good power in both hands. Um, 
But I seen I seen some good patience in his last fight and poise. But I think that was um you was up, Boxer Diamonds. I had you up. You was up. Um, but um I think um I think uh I think it's a it's because he's conserving that gas tank. I think he was a bit worried about the gas tank. And I seen him slow down in the fight that he was controlling the entire pace. You know, Joseph Adorno really wasn't throwing it much of anything so he he fought at a pace that he wanted to fight at the entire night and i seen him slow down and i'm like shakur do you do you do that against him he's definitely gonna pick you apart so i just don't you know you got the skills but i think it's just levels you know what i'm saying and it'd be a good fight nonetheless because dude gonna come to scrap he can punch you're gonna always have that puncher's chance and he he gonna throw them joints so but I think Shakur just levels above a guy like Deva Santos. That don't mean I wouldn't watch the fight though, and it still wouldn't be a good one. I mean, but I don't. I just don't see. It. I don't see him beating him. Shakur, I mean your, I mean your house. I'm in your house, Shakur. <laughs> if I see your up, I got it on me. Then we banging out. Um, in your house, Jacor. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm in your house, Jacor. Man, that's funny, bro. De Los Santos Dude. definitely look like he from Washington Heights or something, though. You know what I'm saying? De Los Santos. Slide bro, over there, the man. He said, man, bro. this is where you be fighting at, right? This is where I'm at. I'm in your house. Ain't this where you at? <laughs> this is where your people kind of see you at, right? I'm here. Just wait your turn, buddy. Keep stay patient. Keep winning. Keep winning, because bro going to keep putting them wins together, man. But that would be, listen, if anything down the line, that would be a cool fight to watch. I, you know what I mean? I'll watch it for sure. I like Devin Santos. He's got a cool skill set. He could fight. Get what I'm saying? I think he's a bit of a front runner, like I said. I think if you fighting somebody that's constantly tagging him, especially early, and making him miss, making him pay, I think you'll see him, his gas tank depleted even more down the stretch. And uh, you'll see him just get picked apart. It'll make it fun, though. Cause he'd really be in there going for it, right? And he probably would land some stuff, but I think he'll just get picked apart. Being honest, yeah. But hopefully he don't, you know, he doesn't get gun shy because you know that happens sometimes. But aggressive fighters, mm-hmm. you get counted a couple times, and all that aggressiveness just go out the window. Now you're just mm-hmm. a little too patient, right? And patience ain't necessarily your game. Uh huh. So you ain't going to be more patient. You get what I'm saying? If that's the game you're going to play, that's in his wheelhouse. So when you try to fight at that accelerated pace and he weather that storm, pick you apart like that, then it's like pick your poison. How you want to try it? You try to play you chess. You just saw it this weekend mm-hmm. in the rematch with you banking on Smith. Smith was far mm-hmm. more aggressive in the first fight. Right. As soon as his ass got sat down on his back pockets with that uppercut, it was a different story yeah. after that. The man was just standing there in the high guard. He tamed him. Yeah, tame <laughs> he was standing there that high guard, and that's how Canelo try to tame you. Which, uh, even if he don't get the actual knockdown, if he can rock you, hurt you, or you know, put that doubt, put that doubt in your head, how you seen from that the result of that uppercut, it put some doubt in Liam Smith's head, right? You seen his approach be a little bit different, right? And that's that's what Canelo be looking to do because if he can put you in that type of compromising situation, now if he wants to, how he typically does, he can coast from round seven to twelve. And he can go for it. He can fight in those spurts. And if he feel like he got you hurt, maybe he can go for it a little more. You get what I'm saying? But he's not going to really, truly, truly go for it because I just don't think that's who he is no more. But he, he does so more so early. Like you see, even the fight with John Ryder he goes for it early. Now, he beat his face up because that dude really had much to offer, but he hung around. You get what I'm saying? So. I just don't know. I see a guy that still like to fight at his own pace, fighting spurts. He likes to, you know, he'll empty the tank a little bit early. You know what I mean? Really go for it. If you can land something with note, then he'll do it. And if he can tame you, then he'll he'll kind of coast in that back half of the fight and just outpoint you that way, fighting in spurts. And like I said, if he can hurt you in the process on the way to doing that, then he'll try to get you out of there. But he's not going to, like, I just don't think he has the gears. Like he goes through the gears how he once used to when he was younger. So that's just me. And to piggyback off your point, also and what that does now that. is now it leaves that impression on the judge that he's controlling the fight. So not only is he leaning the clean and harder shots, but now he's also controlling you. He's the ring general at that point. Mm-hmm. Right. 
is you on the back foot, second mm-hmm. guessing yourself, right. not throwing anything. Right. Double negative. You're on the back foot where you ain't comfortable and your hands is on. You're not really thrown because you're worried about what you're going to get hit with. And then you're still getting hit. <laughs> like Mike, <laughs> man, not going to the hood with that bump at LBL. Man, I thought that was a good touch. I thought that was the, the final touch on it. That was the icing on the cake right there. I said, oh, and he... And he's aware, like somebody must have told him about this. I said, bro, playing the right music. It was either I'll be out or, you know, like a Sioux Surf or something. You get what I'm saying? That would have made sense. So I thought that was funny. You know what I'm saying? Salute to uh, Edwin, man. But, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be tuning into his next fight. I think I think it'll turn into one of those, though. Mm-hmm. We should call him De La Santos. I got De La Santos trying to go for it early. Mm-hmm. He's going to be winging a hook, get mm-hmm. walked into something, and then mm-hmm. now he's going to be uncharacteristically patient. Because mm-hmm. you know who else can punt pretty good? Deceptively, though. I'm not saying he's a puncher, right? But he got some little umph in it. Uh, can say so. I don't know if people seen his last fight, bro. Man, if you see the way this dude was winging them shots, man. You can't tell me he had something on them shots. The dude was swinging for the fences. I was watching Shakur fall him. I was watching Shakur beat the absolute fight out of him. Like the referee, not the referee, the, the doctors in between rounds was consistently checking on this dude. Like I was thinking they were going to stop. And I'm like, damn. So I'm gonna turn yeah. around. Like after a few rounds, they was in the you know in his corner checking on him. I'm like, yo, Shakur's whooping his ass, man. I'm like, <laughs> they kept checking on him between rounds. He made it up out of there, but I heard he was de- he might have dehydrated or something at the end of the fight or whatever the case. But he paid for it, man. He he, he took his high and man, like a man, he got his ass whooped. He couldn't land none of those shots that he was landing against the last dude we fought. I forgot. Uh, how the fight ended in his last fight. I think something weird happened when it ended. I gotta find it, man. Um, let me see. I think, weird. I think Shakur got a little bit more starch on them sh- on them shots than uh, many would believe as well. You know, contrary oh, yeah. to popular belief, because his last mm-hmm. couple fights, he's been putting people on their back pockets. He may not have been knocking everybody out, but it seems like he got a knockdown in, in, in yeah. damn near every fight at some point. Yeah, um, he definitely did. Um, and he's he sharp said, too. That's the yeah, other yeah, thing. He's sharp with his feet. Like that's the funny thing. I seen the last two fights he had with Kinsey The last fight at one thirty. What I remember uh, specifically is, um, you know, the shots, the way they sounded at thirty five. They were sounding off more than they was at one thirty. That's what I remember hearing. Like you could hear them joints in the arena. And I can see the, the reaction that he was getting when he hit Yoshino. He was hurting him to the body and head. You got to think this ain't maybe the elite level competition, but this is a dude coming off a win over, uh, you know, Nakatani, knocking Nakatani out in six rounds. And it took long, but longer than that. You get what I'm saying? So make, make it out what you will, but dude was. And Tia Fomo and Tia Fimo had a tough time right. with Nakatani too. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he said he ain't want to fight tall dudes no more after that fight. You get what I'm saying? Looking all <laughs> uncomfortable, right? So. Get what I'm saying? Shakur fought him. He had what 16 no 12 knockouts. You get what I'm saying? Um Nakatani, everybody ain't just knocking him out. Only other guy to do it. Yeah, Yoshino's not a scrub. Yeah, he went in there and, and I think he was hurting this dude to the body and head. Like I know it. I was seeing it. I'm like, dang, he beating his ass. He's beating this dude ass. Yeah, it was Nicholas Polanco that uh it was a no contest. Something happened in it. What happened? Something ended this fight, but uh Yo, the way uh Kinsei was throwing, if you go look that up and see the highlights on that fight, the way Kinsei was punching this dude, throwing them shots. I'm like early. I'm like, damn, he got some. He he seemed like he since that fight with Shakur, he just wanna fight different. Like he like, man, I ain't you get what I'm saying? He ain't being as patient. He was being super aggressive. But it, he he was paying for I mean, he was uh it was working for him. It was definitely working for him. It was definitely working. And, 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 and that right there to me is a prime example of when you look at these elite guys or the ones that we believe to be elite, mm-hmm. you got to look at the way the guys they fought looked against other people. And that's right. part of why I'm not, I'm not as uh, gung-ho about Bud having this horrible resume like right. people like to perpetuate 
Right. When you look at some of them guys that he had when he fought him, like even Thomas DeLorme had like one loss when he fought him. We look at him now mm-hmm. and say it's whatever. Mm-hmm. But he only had one loss when he fought him. He was a damn good fighter. Posto, Gamboa, uh, Ricky Burns was a, a solid fighter. You know what I mean? True. It's true. It's the thing is, like, are they like the world beaters that, that we think of today? Probably not, but they were definitely quality and, and the credible fighters of, of their time. Like, he definitely was a credible name. He would be lying if you said he wasn't. You get what I'm saying? You might not care for him too much as a fighter, but he's definitely solid. He was credible. I believe he was a champion. Hey, he got his, he, he Crawford went there and beat that boy ass. You know what I'm saying? Absolute whoop his ass. So, mm, man, and I remember that was one of the last, like, bigger wins where he didn't stop somebody. But, sheesh, man, did he does just change that a while. <laughs> Buzz started putting hands on people, bro. Yep. Cool. Every every fight at uh at 147 has been a stoppage. So yeah, that's why I said. But prior that, to that point, impressed. man, um, the notoriety, man, we 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 value that a little bit too much in regard to how we gauge fighters and their quality. It's like, right. oh, we haven't heard of these guys, so they must not be anything. And you go and you look, yeah. and this guy was a champion. This guy was an Olympian. This guy was a decorated amateur, right. and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Is they just don't look no like nobody against him. Like you just said about Yoshino. When you add that context, the way he looked against Nakatani, who other guys had mm-hmm. a, a tough time with this dude. Mm-hmm. And then Shakur made this guy, he just blew him out. Mm-hmm. Like, that's got to count for something. Right. You know, I remember uh, Nazim Richardson was talking about Errol Spence. He said, we know Errol Spence is special, but we don't know how special. And we'll mm-hmm. find out how special he is in the moment where he does something to a guy that nobody else already did to him. Mm. And that's what we just saw with Bud. Mm. Right. That's true. That's true. That's spot on. That's true. So anyone say questions, people saying it's a setup, who will be setting up Bo Mac and for what reason? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's not an angle that I would, um, like, it's not nothing that I'm pushing for me, but, I definitely, I'm always a guy that's open to things, right? It's just, that's just how I am. I'm not saying that that's um, something that's happened, but again, I think it's how people get in there. And I'm not so much, I get the how people are getting there, like why they feel that way, at least. Like leading up to that is, is like, how are you getting caught with something on the way back that you didn't get caught with on the way there? So that's just some inconsistencies, I think, in the, in a way and again i think that it's going to be that way speculation because you know people don't have uh the necessary answers at hand right now to, to some of these questions so people thought processes and imaginations do tend to uh you know go in different places man and i'm, I'm just open to different things like i ain't saying i got a you know i did like i heard somebody say some things about kennehan and mention that i i mean you know it is it's, it's it, it get deep, but you know, for me, <clears throat> I just hope that it, whatever goes on in this situation, he just put he's able to work through it where he ain't spending no substantial amount of time behind bars, especially in a UK jail. That'd be wild. <clears throat> but I get it. I get. It. I you know, I'm just a dude that get people. Like I try to understand if you can tell me what made you feel that way. That don't mean I believe that that's exactly the case. But I can get why you would feel like something ain't making sense about the story, right? So I, if, I don't know if that means somebody, you know, foul play or get what I'm saying. But I know for somebody to say that, you know, at least in a video that they feel they heard that bad his bag was checked initially and one not there, and then they checked it again for no reason and then found something like that right there would that's a red flagish to me. But, you know, I can't, you know, 100% back that claim. So I could just say it's out there. So, again, you're going to hear a number of different things be thrown out there. And, you know, we tend to discuss them. But ultimately, what I'm rolling with is um, it's an unfortunate situation. And um, I, I just hope that it's a real good explanation that would lead to, you know, a resolution to this situation that would be favorable to him. That's all I can say, right? Because you ain't rooting for this for nobody, but 
hope he was smart enough not to just be this careless, right? So who knows? But I think we'll find out more, like I said, in about a month's time, a little more than a month. About the 9th of October, when he probably released a statement, unless he's able to, you know, get some type of statement out before then. Who knows? But we'll we'll see. Yeah, it's kind of like spitballing, right? You spitballing, you don't. The, I think <clears throat> I think the most important thing is not to anything that you know you think you're not passing it off as a fact right i think if you're just speculating things i think that's fine because that's what happened in situations where you don't have all the information you kind of you're not forced to do it but if you speak on it you you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have to give some possible scenarios and my thing is you just don't pass none of them off as fact you could just say hey man maybe this could be a possibility maybe this it's like spitballing man so I just, that's why I'm open to what different people think. Like I get it, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> what we all we can all think what we want. You know, the truth is going to be the truth, or at least what they tell us is going to be the truth, right? So it'll come out eventually, right? One thousand percent, man. And yeah. to piggyback off your other point, though, just mm-hmm. right. Um, in regard to the whole setup, thing. First off, nothing is outside of the realm of possibility. And not also, boxing. this is Especially exactly the type of thing that would be done in which you would fail like, all right, that mm-hmm. isn't feasible. Mm-hmm. Shit is supposed to be outlandish. And I'm no conspiracy theorist, but that's part of the theory. Or part of the conspiracy, I should say, is that it creates that theory. Like, it sounds like it's too far-fetched for it to be true. It's one of those type of things like, yo, nobody's ever going to believe you. That's the type of shit that people get away with. <laughs> the stuff that sounds like it's too outlandish to be true. So again, you know, um, I, I don't know what the case is either, but it's definitely not outside the realm of possibility. We've seen all types of shady business occur in boxing, whether it be illegal hand wraps, Plastering gloves, right? Uh, Panama Lewis spiking a drink, salute. like all types of things have happened. Right, right. It's true. That is, I mean, you just you. It's hard to put stuff past people, right? You just can never put stuff past anybody, especially <clears throat> in the sport of boxing. Like bro was saying, you know, the drug and the water is a real thing. I'm just like specifically with the sport when you've seen so much corruption on so many different levels like i just don't never i don't completely run with anything but my mind stays open to it being a possibility because of how dirty things could be right i don't pass it off as a fact or you know you might throw it out there maybe say some you know this is something people think you know some people feel set up or you know foul play or whatever the case but you just never know right just you never know, but um, hopefully, like I said, man, they figure that situation out and he uh get to get back to doing what he's doing, which is coach, you know what I mean. But um, one more thing I was gonna speak on real quick before we got up out of here, y'all see, I got Keith Thurman and uh, you know, um, podcast Porter up here because I seen uh some stuff that Keith Thurman, I mean, uh, Sean Porter had to say about Keith Thurman. That was and that's the face off right there. That's the face off right there. You give it up. You can't take it one time. You can't take it one time. That way you can see what's on the line the first time. It don't matter. That's what I'm saying. All right. 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 Hey, it is what it is. Whenever you have it, don't worry about it. You sure? Never could, never would. You sure? Never could, never would. Never could, never would. Oh, really? Hey, did I run that fight? Did I run? It don't matter what happened. You did? Hell. You ran? No, I had to run. You've been running every single and you've been running every since. Let me say this. Let me say this and it's over. I told you he was Hey, Y'all know what it is. We waiting on him. So when y'all, when y'all wonder why every fighter in the welterweight division is inactive, it's because this man right here ain't man enough to get in the ring. Just say what it is. So, 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 so when, whenever. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sean Porter was talking that talk. 
Um, but yeah, so look, I was reading to that. I just played that because of, you know, we see the history that they had. They did put up a great fight when they fought. They fought their asses off, man. Um, I think that was one of the last times, one of the last times that Keith Thurman was at the elite level. He was the elite Keith Thurman. Like, he was still the one-time type of Keith Thurman when he fought Sean Porter. I think since then, you know, we might have seen that guy maybe maybe against Danny Garcia, and I think Danny Garcia stopped all that. I think um, that was the beginning of things to change for Keith Thurman. You get what I'm saying? And um, I just think nowadays, you know, he's missing a gear too. That's, you know, he'll never return to that one-time guy that he was, but, but still a damn good fighter, good boxer, but he'll never be that exact that one time. Like, and it's crazy because they say the last thing to go usually is your power. Sean Porter has some interesting comments and he said, you know, not only do Keith Thurman need to get his ass back in the ring and get the 154 and fight, but he feel like his power is gone and he feel like his power, he ain't really got no power like that no more because his power has eroded over the years of constantly, you know, making a 147 pound limit and, you know, I guess uh, draining himself down and how hard it's been for him to maintain that weight and stay there, you know, mixed with the inactivity and injuries. Say so he really don't feel like he got power like that. So I thought that was interesting, but. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to see Keith Thurman not only back in the ring, but back in the ring in a timely manner where it wouldn't be him him considered coming off another layoff. Like, by the time he get back in the ring, it's going to be another layoff. So, you know what I mean? It's just unfortunate because he did speak to, you know, being inactive and, and how, like, you know, that's definitely not something that he wants, not something he prefer, but it's just it's the business, right? And it's just unfortunate, right, because things since – since losing to Manny Pacquiao ain't ain't been the best for him. You know what I mean? So we'll see, man, what Keith Thurman got left. But something that I'm hearing, because my bro, bro bro put me up on it, so I always got to give L Dub his credit, especially if this were to come to fruition. I was hearing something about, you know, more so a Thurman possible fight with Stan Jonas and then uh, Boots a possible fight with Cody Crowley and the winner might fight each other. So I feel like that if that's the case, like I was saying to him when he said that that's great for boxing because when we when it's always a plus when we get great fights that create other great fights, even better fights, right? So you get a Cody Crowley and uh Boots in this, that's a damn good fight. They both undefeated young, still trying to prove themselves right. Solid ass fight for Boots. And you feel like keep Thurman fight to Stan Jonas, I think that's a winnable fight. But a tough, winnable fight for him, right? I really, I believe that because he still can move and stuff in there, right? So, but I just don't know how he'll look. But I do think it's a winnable fight. And I just say, hi, bless you. Say hypothetically, you know, he, you know, Boots beat Crowley and Thurman fights Dan Jonas and beat him. And they really fight each other. There you go, the Boots and Thurman fight that some people have been calling for. I would pay for it. I would watch it for sure. Despite who I think it win and lose, I'll watch it because it'll be a good fight and interesting fight for boxing, especially to see if Boots can stop Thurman, knowing that, you know, he's lost once, we got by outbox, and I believe that was a majority decision loss or split decision. It wasn't a unanimous, I don't believe, so it's a close loss nonetheless, but it would be interesting to see if somebody could actually stop Keith Thurman, not just drop him, drop him and stop him. So see if Boots could do that, it'd be fun. In his last fight, his legs still look good against Barrios. He was moving pretty right. well, even though, especially when he got hit to the body, he was on that bike, right, cycling around the ring. He looked he looked pretty good from that standpoint. But I do think that the shoulder injuries may have taken some of the pop out of his punch, and the elbow spurs and stuff like that, that too. You know, so right, it's been a rough couple of years from. And in addition to that. I was watching this Floyd Patterson interview from 1985. It was good, bro. And the interviewer asked him, when did you know that the spark was gone? And he said that he felt the spark was gone when he married his second wife. And he cared more about his second wife than he did for boxing. And you mm -hmm. notice, in addition to the injury, Keith Thurman got married, started a family. You know, you got a little girl, if, if I'm not mistaken. And right. Right, he just hasn't been as active since then. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think he uh, 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 I think he's found another love, which has been a priority of his. And I think that's his family. And I think 
it's the timing in which everything came together for him. Like you gotta think the timing in which he got married, he was very successful at a point already. So you get what I'm saying? Some complacency might have settled in. You're very successful, you up, you got some money, household name, you, but you're dealing with injuries, but you're enjoying family life. So it's like, the t I think that kind of made him a bit complacent and not as hungry because he found another love, which was him being a father more so, and, you know, being a husband. And I don't think nothing wrong with that. I think we critique these fighters a lot for being human, yo. And then we don't consider how much sacrifice, how much they sacrifice through all the years that these dudes be boxing. You get what I'm saying? It's crazy, the level of sacrifice. And just to think that, you know, you can't be human is crazy. So I just ain't mad at him. But I would like to see whatever he got left for the sport of boxing. I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? I want to see it. So we'll see, man. Salute to Keith Thurman. And, um, you know, uh, respect to him. I just want to see him back in the ring. Overall, man, this is, you know, the sport of boxing is thriving. It's doing well. We got a lot of great fights, matchups to be potentially made. We got some good action to look forward to, man. Like I said, um, hopefully Bo Max squares the situation away so we can continue to, you know, coach these fighters you know Keyshawn got a fight october 14th you know tans crawford and spence is supposed to be due back in the ring sometime around december hopefully he'll be around for that he just came off a crazy win with good win with chris eubank dominant in dominant fashion so you just want to see that man keep, keep building and um ignore the rumors because i do believe they are rumors in terms of spence uh fire and derrick james i think that's some little conquer and divide tactic to put out false information simply because people can't get a bead on them and don't know what's what's going on with them. You get what I'm saying? So and they fill them blanks. You get what I'm saying? You should have been patient. You see that activated the rematch clause. Where at did did that say that Derek James was fired? So that I think that's garbage. <laughs> if <clears throat> if it turns out to be true. I'll be one of the first ones to say I'm wrong. And, oh, yo, he really did fine. But, I, like I said, I think that's just, you know, BS that somebody's pushing and people putting out because they, you know, they like narratives. You know what I'm saying? They like narratives. So, again, man, salute to everybody in the building. This been another dope build. It's always boxing. It's going to continue to win as long as we build it up, man. So, with that, man, salute to my bro and everybody in the chat. Y'all make sure y'all smashing that like button if y'all haven't on the way out. And you know, we 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 just gave boxing is just do how we always do, man. Y'all just y'all know we be right back at it. <laughs> y'all once upon a time, Thurman. Y'all already know we be right back at it tomorrow, four o'clock to do our thing. So I appreciate everybody in the building. Salute to the fam that stayed to the end of the show. Salute to my bro Ant. And D free the bros that came on the panel. Much love and appreciation to all y'all. And we gonna get up out of here on that one, y'all. Peace to the fan. We out. Yeah.